It's the Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. And I am Ron Bennington. Hmm. Lots to talk about uh, today. But as usual, I had one of those problems where I'm on my way to work, but there's a movie on I haven't seen in a while, so I just sit and watch it. This is a movie that we've all basically overrated over the course of our lifetime. And when I say all, I mean the people on this show. <laughs> and I decided, no. We've underrated it because I hadn't seen it in a long time. Reservoir Dogs. It's that <laughs> fucking simple. It's unbelievably good. That's a movie like you catch it and you're going to be like, oh, I'll be late. I'll just yeah, finish watching. That's what I thought to myself. And everybody would understand. <laughs> Wiki would have to go like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. What time was it on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Of course. Because you feel like you know that movie inside and out. Yes, I do. And of course, because of the great Jay Moore. You know every scene because mm -hmm. of because the reason why I bring this up. Nice guy Eddie is one of the greatest characters so of all funny. time. In a movie of great characters, he's the best, and he doesn't even get to put a suit on. So, Chris, it's the Mexican standoff. Yeah, don't you point that gun? Do it at my daddy, Gail. Stop pointing that gun at my dad. Gail's correct. It doesn't say daddy. No. Mm -mm. What? And I sat there and I had to rerun it. And I'm like, Jay Moore has fucked up my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's dad. Yeah, he said I shit. can't believe that you knew that. I remember it, yeah. I thought that you were going to do daddy, too. Daddy. <laughs> daddy. That's my daddy. <laughs> Stop pointing that gun at my dad. <laughs> so shit. weird that he doesn't say daddy. <laughs> Why wouldn't he say daddy? <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, but he does say dad. <laughs> it would have been better. I agree. It would be the superior line. But he the, improved upon it. But the fucking scene where he's just saying uh, the story about the dancer who fucking glues the guy's dick. Yeah. yeah. He's unbelievable in it. Yeah. He's unbelievable he's in that fucking scene. <laughs> best. And the scene uh, with uh, Blonde where they're wrestling around on the floor. Oh, in the office. All right. That's enough of that. You <laughs> he tried to fuck me. <laughs> See that, Daddy? He got so much of that jizz pumped up his ass. He turned in. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> All right, stop messing around in here. It's so fucking good. <laughs> yeah. And I even went back to watch the fucking scene, of course, where he's learning that he has to have a story, and then they go to the story. Yeah. Tarantino's a kid, never directed. Yeah. And that's great. Here's the other thing, too, about that movie. It never once feels like reality. You know what I mean? Like this reality. Right. You feel so fucking high watching this movie or like it's it's almost like you're kind of asleep and you're in and out of it because it's so hypnotic. Right. Because like in reality, the way I think most people would have handled that story, you would have followed also... Um, you know, the cops who were outside, you would follow their storyline. You never line. once see them. You would know, okay, you're following them, knowing that they're inside. You're following the diamonds. Where did the diamonds just go? We never once no. see the diamonds. You would have seen the heist. You would have seen the shootout in the Yeah, you just see those couple of things of running and shit like that. Yeah. But you don't personalize those victims, nope. nothing. It's weirdly kind of like a play because of the lack of action with uh, like a couple scenes and outside budget. i yeah. mean you can tell from the last scene that they were either out of time or squibs you know what i mean <laughs> but he just throws squibs. himself out of the fucking movie <laughs> you know he just chucks it and that's the end of it yeah and uh the soundtrack is just amazing and it was weird because we had heard joe tex yesterday yeah well you know like if you were if you were in his position, what would you spend money on? Would you spend money on the soundtrack that you wanted to have, or would you spend money on the action scenes that you wish you could have? You know what I mean? Well, I'm not ever going to go against uh, QT because the soundtrack kind of made that fucking movie. Yeah, and that that was a tie between all of them. That they're like, hey, this weekend. We're hearing these fucking pop songs from the seventies yeah. that we haven't heard in forever. Right, and it's great. You know what I mean? It's just this little link that there's no one who goes, turn that shit off. I hated it back then. And I hate it now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we always say it's a cool soundtrack. It isn't. You know what I mean? It's cool because of the movie. Right. But none of those songs were considered cool fucking songs. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very unique. That and like between the soundtrack and the dialogue, that's like all the movie lands on. Right. And that's like that's always going to appeal to me is a, a movie uh, or even, a, you know, whatever. If you put your emphasis on great dialogue, then I'm I'm caught, which is kind of like uh, I know you guys didn't watch like the original series, but like t- the show Twin Peaks, they like did another season this year and it was really surreal and really weird. And it was very polarizing and people either loved it or hated it. And I was arguing that I was not enjoying it. And I I appreciate that he was doing something artistic, but I cannot connect when we're just like no dialogue. Like we're not having interaction between characters and we spend 20 minutes in a surreal world. Visuals are awesome. I think that they were cool, but it's very hard for me to connect. What about what about the first 20 minutes of There Will Be Blood? For some reason. Yeah. And I'm a dialogue person too. But for some reason I just fucking But that's like there were there was like there was a lot of um you learned about the character within that time. Yeah. So in a yeah, I agree, but I also think that then they kick in fantastic dialogue yes. eventually. But then like that beginning is like a stillness and a quietness that kind of sets the tone for we're Ooh, a, this person is we're a family it. business. This is my son. <laughs> so fucking weird. <laughs> bread. Let's talk about bread. <laughs> There'll be bread, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to listen to this guy. Dude, we're going to be eating bread soon. <laughs> He's got a kid. Seems to love him very much. Look, did he love him, you think? Oh, no. God, no. He was, the kid was a prop. It was a prop for him to Now, get can over. I ask you this? Yeah. Now we're getting deep into another movie, but uh, do you think he was, in fact, a bastard in a basket? Like, was he lying to hurt him? Or was, like... I mean, you do see him as a baby. Well, yeah, but I don't... I, it looked like he was, like, uh, the fucking firehouse puppy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know where that kid came from. I don't think that was his actual dad, but he took him. Right. But I might say... As capable as he was able to love, maybe he did love him. Right, because remember the heartbreak of when he was hurt, yeah, and he wanted to be able to help him, but then it was like beyond what he was able to do. It was yeah. beyond his empathy to be able to have the patience to deal with his son once he was deaf. I feel that when he was deaf, it's just like that. It, like it seemed like he cared about, him, but that just made it harder for him to use this kid in his fucking scheme. Well, he, he, I mean, I'm not saying that you're wrong. You're right about that. But it was like his version of love, like your version of love. Oh, yeah. yeah, like how you love your girlfriend, but you Ooh, know, in Chris your is very, very nice with me. <laughs> me more, you know. I don't know what that even means. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> Chris takes me out low riding. He rolls joints for me. He's good to me. That's a strange accent she has for somebody from Costa Rica. I, yeah, I it almost doesn't sound Costa Rica in a weird way. I wonder if she's lying to me. <laughs> I oh, Jesus, if she's fucking playing you for that settlement. Oh my God, catfished? Can't talk about that. Long con? Uh, hey, Ryan, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Yeah, yeah. Paul uh, Thomas Anderson just did a Reddit uh, AMA, and someone asked him if he actually did love his kids uh, and uh, about... Uh, Daniel Plainview, and he said, yeah, I, I would hope that was uh, obvious in the movie. Wow, Chris, you look like a fucking maniac totally now. Yeah. fucking wrong. Holy shit. <laughs> PTA will be pissed at me. I didn't know they still did AMAs. Yeah, they still do. They used to be just regular people, <laughs> then celebrities started doing them, and then celebrities started getting in trouble for doing them, yeah. but now it's just all very controlled. You know, I'm going to tell you this sometimes, uh, and I don't know how, I guess, you, do you see them in real time? Sometimes, yeah. But yeah, yeah. whenever anyone says, oh, you got to read this AMA because it's somebody that you like, I'll, c- I'll click on the link and I'm like, this is f- so fucking messy. Yeah. The form- I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. Like 99% of all the comments are just people just like jerking off. Yeah. It, but see, awful. the thing is, why don't they just say, here's the question and there's the answer. Why do I got to get a bunch of people that he's <laughs> obviously not paying yeah. attention to? You're scrolling through 10,000 comments. Yeah. Maybe I yeah. can fix the AMAs. You if should. they would let me know. I know. Just that, the formatting. I mean, by that, a- I mean the American Music Awards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are a formatting genius. It seems that way. I'm known for my formatation. Um, That, then, what are the other the other websites that's like, you like it and weird? That one, I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand the format of that 
whatsoever. Yeah, that's just people. This is anonymous people. And just then talking. what's the one that the teens like? And there's Tumblr? like a picture. Yeah, Tumblr. Tumblr. I don't know what I'm looking that at. That I've never. It's I mostly like, GIFs. It's, yeah, but it's like something is posted, but the way the comment section goes, I don't I don't understand what I'm looking at. It's no. just like, it, I don't uh, know. But not can't that make long my ago, brain understand it. Like six months ago, you guys told me Tumblr was dead. And now I'm hearing the word Tumblr again. It's back in a big, big way. Yeah, Tumblr. I think Chris was the one who called death to Tumblr. I'm so... Un- yeah, I remember that. I yeah. did, yeah. And then, then, maybe a few months later, you said that you were watching Tumblr porn on the train. <laughs> what? Yeah, because they, <laughs> just a gif of- <laughs> Yeah, because the gifs, they load faster. I can't just load streaming video video on the subway, but a bunch of gifs can load. And I'm like, okay, it's over and over again. So you just sit and stare at fucking... Porn gifs. <laughs> I'm not proud of this. I mean, don't you get bored? I mean, like, after you watch it loop, like, two or three times. <laughs> Depends on the GIF. Sometimes it's more fun than others. Some, Yeah, some are very boring. But some, there's a lot of action going on. Okay. But you're standing all around people. Yeah. I kinda, I hold my phone like, all right, so if I'm standing on the subway, I'm holding it like this. Like, it's a, at this but that's it's a like, creep thing. Yeah, you're I on the radio, by the way. It's a creep thing. Now, now that's antisocial. But uh, I took the elevator up with Chris today, right? We had to make a bunch of fucking stops. And he keeps looking at me. <laughs> because an Asian guy is eating a fucking sandwich next to him. Like a barbecue chicken or something sandwich. It stunk. And it's like the full half of fucking All right. Hero. Now, if I have to imagine these two scenarios, I'm sitting on the subway. Would I rather someone eating a sandwich next to me or watching porn gifs? She's got a point. I would gifts. much rather watch. All right. I was, sitting next to, I was sitting next to a guy in the train. And he was just looking through his phone. And he was looking at sex. And just like zooming in on some girl's tits that sent him a naked picture of her. It was the funniest shit. I'd much rather have that than the guy. Why wouldn't you down. go like this? Let me take a look at it. <laughs> hey, can you send that to me? Here's my address. All right. Maybe. What if it's porn you don't enjoy? <laughs> well, then I just won't look. Look, let me tell you something. The other day I had to go up and have a little meeting with Jack. Now, the only reason I ever go to 37 is because that's where the pisser is right now. Yeah. And it's fucking just filled with fucking cubicles. All right. So we might as well be in fucking Peking when you're walking through there. Pod people. It's just fucking packed, right? All these animals had apparently been eating their lunch. This place smelled like a fucking Jewish hospital from 1939. <laughs> it fucking just had this old smell. And I'm like, the first thing I would do if I was made a head of Sirius XM is if I see you. Coming back with fucking food. You're fired. I can't have this place smell like this. We got stars up here. I just walked past Rob Regal. You know what I mean? And he's the guy holding together the whole fucking football betting season. I don't want him smelling old fucking sandwiches. Yeah, you don't want to smell bologna. I smelled a salad. It was so disgusting. (laughs) I almost fucking turned around and left. I go into Jack's office. I just puke in his fucking trash can. (laughs) And I said, let's get this started. (laughs) <laughs> he's up there he's fucking sniffling or whatever and I said to him I've never had a cold in my life <laughs> he can't drop it it's fucking four days later he's still burning I, up. he goes are you serious were you kidding about that cold thing I go no I go you have a nice fucking icy juice every morning you will never get sick I go you like apple juice right he's like yeah well, you drink apple juice every day you'll never get a cold he says that's what you do I go I drink all the juices any kind of juice there is. I go, I just had a V8 fucking five minutes ago before I saw you. Never had a cold. I don't even relate to it. He's like, I don't even know whether you're kidding. I go, Jack, I don't remember the last time I sneezed. I don't even know if I know how to do it. If it came up, it would be such a shock. <laughs> and he just looks like he should be home. You know what I mean? Go home. You're fucking sick, dude. Yeah. And we, yeah. we live in a world that if you, if you want to answer an email... Yeah, your boss is right there anytime that you want your boss now. Yeah. You know? Unfortunately, so are the employees. (laughs) Anytime the fucking boss gets an idea. Like, hey, guys. He's a mess. Fucking I am. (laughs) (laughs) What do you say we tear everything down and start all over? (laughs) What? Starting now. (laughs) Sounds like a lot of work. Mm -mm. (laughs) You're going to do it. It's going to be fine. (laughs) All right. Anyway, so that was my my Reservoir Dogs moment today. Quite frankly, I'm glad I fucking brought it up, you know. And just so everybody knows, I went and checked the on-demand. I'm going to be doing the winter of Tarantino. Oh, nice. I'm going to just spend the rest of the winter watching 
Every Tarantino movie. In order? Well, I already started with Reservoir Dogs. Let's not well. fucking hop around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the only one I got a uh, fucking that's not on like immediate on demand is uh, the Austin one, that fucking crazy one that weirded everybody out. The um, <laughs> what everybody considers to be his worst movie, when him and Rodriguez Death split. Proof. Yeah. yeah. Which I fucking love the lead character in that. Oh it's yeah. Fucking funny as shit. Yeah. I mean, if that's your worst movie, congratulations, my friend. Because <laughs> that's better than Rodriguez's worst movie. <laughs> now, here's my only problem. Should I be watching uh, Dust to Dawn and True Romance, or do I just go direct it only? I feel like you can pepper those in. You know what I mean? Like a little palate cleanser. <laughs> director only. Stick with direct, just director only. Chris, you know, he's keep been, it, he's been on. You listen to him. <laughs> well, he did remember that daddy thing. Daddy. <laughs> misremembered <laughs> i just feel like i'm helping you out by giving you two lovely movies i know but not quite in his no. you know his range but i know but you know i'm already i got all these other movies hanging over my head and i got stuff <laughs> i gotta do look i know it's a tremendous amount of pressure <laughs> i'm gonna ask you guys this yeah what color is this shirt then black chris that looks like dark navy blue until this morning, I've called this my brown shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not that. I mean, I paused because I was thinking maybe we were going towards what Chris was saying, but I had to realize that I just needed to be honest with myself. I, I said to I was my trying check, to guess the right answer. I said to my check, I go, what, uh, what scarf goes with this brown shirt? He goes, it's not a brown shirt. <laughs> So I have a weird kind of uh, color blindness that seems to be about darkness. Now, another one of my problems is I dropped this phone on the floor and it's fucking invisible to me. Really? Yeah. I can never find dark things on a dark floor. That's very strange. And I don't even think that that's color blindness. No, I don't know what. That's like night blind. Because when I found out that I had my navy blue black problem, like the fact that I thought the Bears jerseys were black. Up until everybody will, yelled will at me. Will you pull them up for me just so I could look at them? Because I just want to look at the yeah, take shade a look. of... Yeah. And don't be pulling up their fucking whites, you idiot. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's navy blue. That's a black jersey. Although, I'm going to be honest, the helmet is quite a bit darker shade. Thank you. So, I could see how if you're like... if Because the helmets tend to be more consistent than j the jerseys, no? Or am I wrong? I don't even know what you mean by consistent. Like, don't they change the helmet style usually less than, I don't know, I always I see them they, change they, in different colors. They change the whole thing. Yeah, they but when they do the color rush, I think it's still the same helmet. Yeah, are they sw swapping I mean, you helmets? don't want to be fucking around with your helmet, you know what I mean? Yeah. You get that helmet fitted perfectly so you don't get brain injuries, so you can't be like, here's your new helmet. <laughs> I remember when I was a fucking, good? when I was a kid, like you were playing like the Little League version of football, 65 pounds, 75 pounds. These fucking helmets would be banging up against your head while you're running. That you're seems just, worse yeah. than just not having one. Yeah, it is. It just fucking, you just rattled around in there like a fucking bullet in a trash can. Um, but maybe what, okay, what is it possible that you are, what you're thinking is like colorblind. You're seeing something brown. Maybe you're seeing something in more detail than I am. Because yeah. clearly, like, there are different shades within Look. black. I just want to be ordinary. I don't even want to be extraordinary. Just make me a normal man who doesn't say things that stop people. And with great power comes great responsibility. Let me Rob. tell you, anytime there's like a colorblind test, yeah. like, you know, this, can you see the eight or whatever? Say it every fucking time. So I don't have the red and green problem. Right. That constitutes colorblindness. But when something runs dark, it's just a black hole to me from that point on. Yeah. I know that. I think maybe BuzzFeed does like colorblind type tests and they do specific to like, how is your blue black ratio? How is your. So I bet you have something that is specific to just. Well, that. I took that test and it said I was Rachel from Friends. <laughs> so I didn't go back again. <laughs> when, you, when you take that, who do you want to be? Like if they do the which friend are you? I want to be um, Chan Chandler Bing. That's who I want to get. Well, why did you have to think about that? I can never. I always get him and uh, Ross mixed up. First of all, a lot of friends. 
I know who the Prince are. You, let me tell you something about J- Jalen Big. And fucking, he's homophobic. <laughs> Already there. Oh, that's you motherfucker. I don't oh like those kind Oh my God, jokes. that's not good. You better get woke, 2018. bitch. 2018. Yeah, I'm going to find Wait, my Wait, is it 2018? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Fuck. Where have I been? I, I really wish that I could have got that barely legal 18 going. You remember when I tried to get Sweet 16 going? It didn't go. I really thought barely legal was going to catch on. Look, it's just not. Barely legal is just already a perfect fucking statement. <laughs> <laughs> Barely legal. <laughs> I mean, it is legal. <laughs> yes, but it's legal. Barely. <laughs> but, but we're talking by minutes. When we shot this. <laughs> uh, Don't expect me to dive on you. I want Phoebe, by the way. Phoebe? And if I don't get Phoebe, I just kind of feel like that was a joke test. And you know what they give me? Monica. And I just, come on. I'm not a Monica. What's wrong with Monica? I might I be like, like Monica. Let me tell you the truth. I feel like if you're going to tell me I'm like a Phoebe Monica combo, because I have a theory that everybody's like a combo friends, because nobody's like a full on well, of the not character. Not even Joey is. Yeah. They ended up just splitting up all the lines. Like you might be like, like a Joey Chandler combo. You're not just Chandler. I want to be Rachel out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> if I would have fucking named that show, it would have been Rachel and friends. <laughs> and everybody else would have gotten just fucking day player money. <laughs> and she would have gotten just of it all. And Chandler's like, I feel like I'm getting a lot of laughs. Do not step on Rachel. Um, Matt, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ron, how you doing? I don't know. You know, I got all these fucking sight problems now. Yeah, so I have the same exact problem that you were describing. What? And, uh, in fact, it's worse in the morning where I There's couldn't another. Between, <laughs> between black and navy. Uh-huh. So I, I, I got this light bulb that is like an LED light bulb that matches the, the same uh, uh, UVs as, as sunlight. And I put it in the lamp in the bedroom. And now when I put that lamp on, only that lamp, their regular light bulbs don't work. But with that lamp, I can distinguish between navy and black. We ought to put that light on a fucking helmet like you're walking around in a cave. Amen. <laughs> if you would like, we could change these lights to all your special lights in here. Because I heard him say yesterday that this studio is all black, and I was really concerned. What do you mean? <laughs> it is all black, isn't it? Oh, uh, uh, uh. We're Used living in be. a blue, blue world. Used to be all black. <laughs> Used to be look like a fucking Iron Maiden fucking uh, rehearsals fucking hall. And Jesus don't want me for something. I don't want a special light. I just want to be a regular person. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to be like you, or you, or you, or you, <laughs> or that guy in the hall over there, or that lady. Look, you have special needs. I do have a special <laughs> need. But, you know, I don't even think the sunlight thing, because I've seen day games with the fucking bears before. <laughs> and I remember yelling out, beat those black jersey bastards. <laughs> So glad you said Jersey. Well, this is what happened. Somebody said to me, the jerseys are blue. And I go, no, I meant that guy from Jersey that's playing on their team. <laughs> Beat him. Um, bonus back, Mr. Down. I just want to point out that the tickets are going fast to see Rich Voss and friends. And um, it's me and Florentine. We're the friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hosting. And then Rich Foss is the big superstar. He's kind of the Rachel, you're saying, of that show. I was told that I have to bring him up. Let's hear it for the superstar. <laughs> <laughs> That's happening Friday, February 9th at 8 p.m. at the Ridgefield Playhouse in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Go to ridgefieldplayhouse.org for tickets. Do you know that he comes up to a song now? What is it? Jesus Christ, superstar. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's bold. Well, he is the fucking star of the night. Ridgefield fucking knows it. They come out in droves. <laughs> There's scattered tickets in this uh, place. I got to think of some jokes now. <laughs> Ridgefield, Ridge, Ridge. Like ruffles have ridges? Yeah. What that's is good. this, potato chip field? <laughs> is that anything? Is yeah, there that's something good. there? That's it. I feel like you got 20 on that at least. Uh, what if I say I'm here for the Ridge Field of Dreams? That's good. I don't want to have a couch with my dad. 
<laughs> it's good, but I wouldn't go too far off the, the ruffles material. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll break it up with a couple of the things. <laughs> you know? So back to ruffles, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of a topic sick. So back to anything. Uh, yeah, it's always funny. <laughs> I have uh, some more material about that thing. My favorite thing is when a comic goes, So, what do you want to talk about? Um, and you're like, That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got going on right, today? Let's start a little bit of QA right off the bat. <laughs> Any- <laughs> Who's got a Q? I'll give you the A right now. <laughs> What was Regal doing here today? Did you do the Jimmy show? Uh, yes, Jimmy and uh, EW. For the 12 Horses movie, I'm not sure. It's about Never the- fucking goodbye horses. I thought he'd be here to talk football. No, it was. I just think of him as straight football now. Yeah. But no, he was here to promote a film. 12 Strong. It's 12 about strong. the people horses. who went on horseback into like the desert after 9 11. Oh, yeah. Because he was a Marine colonel. Yeah. Look, let me tell you something. Because I am on a um, Sunday game thread, um, not the same as my Eagles thread. One of our friends fucking hates the comedy of Rod Brigo. I'll give you just one hint. Okay. okay. It's not a soft rock. <laughs> and that's all I'm giving you. Think. <laughs> it's going to take you a while, but think about it. I'm thinking about giving Vito his dream of nighttime preps, switching with Chris. Really? Whoa. Yeah. I could be a day man. Hey, man. Whoa. <laughs> Greatest fucking song ever. That's the shit. I wonder why you didn't run and get that. But, uh, because Veet's stuff is a little old. Mm-hmm. You can't be day man and come in with 26 year old material. The world moves too fucking too fast to be and even 12 hours behind and the thing is chris is always finger on the pulse kind of guy yeah he is finger on the pulse they used to call me breaking news boy <laughs> you broke a lot of news to me over the years <laughs> when was his time i didn't hear it but now that i am hearing it yeah. makes perfect fucking sense you guys didn't hear it but other people were calling breaking news boy coming down the i hall. remember one day i fucking was having lunch and chris came running into the room screaming Limburg has landed <laughs> it's happened we've crossed the atlantic with a plane Chris, where do you think Lindbergh landed? Uh, he landed in Long Island. <laughs> he flew from the uh, from New Jersey to Long Island. <laughs> I thought the other coming back the other way. <laughs> Vito, do you know Pennsylvania? Come on, man! How do you guys? This was this was the same thing as Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. Which, by the way, I shouldn't even have given him your name. You know, what I mean, he probably would have just fucked it up. <laughs> I got all right. I got confused with uh, the blimp exploding. I'm it didn't s- explode in Long Island. <laughs> so that fucking excuse of yours. Paris, France. Paris, like he's going to make it right into the city. Well, outside on the outskirts of Paris, France, where the, <laughs> the airport is. I've been to Paris, France. First of all, why would they have an airport then? There was only like eight planes. Shit, <laughs> 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 well, yeah. we built this airport, but so far no one's flown here yet. <laughs> Imagine how crazy it must have felt like if you were the, like the first people on a passenger fucking plane. It, you would not yeah. have any idea what was about to happen. Yeah. And they said... <laughs> well, what if you had turbulence? Everyone was supposed to be thinking they're fucking going straight to their death. I mean, you're not wrong. It's just really funny. <laughs> like, there's no protocol for this. I couldn't yeah. even ask anyone. Well, is, is this, this is normal? how fucked up... When you, when you go down to D.C., they got that airplane museum or something out near the fucking airport, right? It's unbelievable. I mean, they have all these old airplanes. There's fucking space shuttles in there. It's fantastic. But you look at these beautiful planes, way more gorgeous. And they were set up like there were trains, like there's booths that you could fucking what? sleep in and shit. Yeah. We got to take that. See, the problem with us, when we go down to D.C., we just go and leave. But I'd love to take you fucking idiots through some of these museums. I know. They're free as shit. Right? What? Yes. Oh, we got the federal go <laughs> That's what's stopping you, you all this time. Oh, that is pretty far away from oh, serious. Sure. I mean, we're looking at a pretty good track. <laughs> can you go into the planes? They let you in? Yeah, they let you in. <laughs> you can fly them if yeah. you like. You know, these beautiful antique things, they let the kids go out and run back and forth <laughs> like it's Chuck E. Cheese. I'm curious. <laughs> I want to know if it's interactive. <laughs> Child. It's 
that good unless I can go in there. <laughs> go ahead, start it, sir. <laughs> See if you can get those controllers going. <laughs> The fucking Enola Gray is in there. Yeah. Mercury things. It's unbelievable. Those Mercury, I'm going to call it a spacecraft, but really it's just a fucking trash can. Yeah. Like you could not have been a Mercury pilot if you weighed, I'll say 150. <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to fucking fit in there. They were tiny little ass. And they have their like little jackets and they're just fucking the littlest things you've ever seen. It, it looks like the yeah, the same suit that John John wore. When he was saluting. Look at it. That's a nightmare. Holy and you shit. ain't moving in there at all, Chris. So it's, like just, a, it's just like a flying phone booth. Is he in stirrups? I mean, it's, 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 I mean. Yeah, because he was getting his vagina <laughs> checked by that mean fucking doctor. <laughs> that mean Olympic doctor. Yeah, that's his pep. <laughs> you, I, I fucking saw some of the details yesterday. That, you know that uh, gymnast doctor? that. Oh, sick fuck. So they made this motherfucker sit there yesterday by while well, a bunch of those girls just got up and fucking screamed at him, right? It was But here's the thing. They honestly had no idea they were even being sexually abused. They thought that this guy was just doing stuff. You know, Cause like because he was a doctor and this is the gymnast thing that you gotta yeah. do. Because they were little girls. And he was taking pictures of them and stuff. Jesus. But they weren't like, here, pose for me, naughty. It was like, these are medical pictures. This fucking guy, there's been nobody like him. Yeah, we got to hear about Aziz a hundred times a day. Because there was a fucking cover-up with this by the thing. One of the famous girls wasn't even allowed to go in and say something to him because she took money and it was a hush-hush thing, Which right? girl was that? I don't want to say which one. Uh. You know what I mean? Like, unlike them, I protect anonymity. Uh-huh. Plus, I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but <laughs> she was one of the big famous ones. But she she even figured out, hey, this is fucked up. The Olympic, the U.S. Olympic, whatever it is, said, oh, here's some money. Now, remember to keep your fucking mouth shut Fuck so he can, you know, because th there's like hundreds of girls that could fucking sue and should sue. Now, here's another thing about the Olympics. And I know you guys always say, like, I hate the Winter Olympics. <laughs> Too cold. <laughs> The fucking North Koreans and South Koreans are going to be one fucking team. Yeah. So I immediately say this because I hate this shit that they pulled off. It's keeping us out of the World Cup with Trinidad and Tobago, right? Yeah. Nobody could beat two nations. <laughs> Nobody. Certainly, these guys are going to run roughshod all through this and ended up beating, you know, well, I'll just say Germany or Spain. I don't know who they all are. But I'm going to make this fucking point, right? We should team up with Canada for the North American team. You know, I'm saying that for one reason. Winter Olympics, okay? <laughs> sure. Summer, what well, good would it do us? Yeah, we'll but drop Winter them. Olympics, it's the U.S. and Canada, brothers in arms. And in that time, we take everybody off the border. Everybody can run back and forth. I love that. And That's you get brilliant. to do that every four years? Let's just try it this year and see what happens. Right. You know. I definitely want to run a bunch of cigarettes up there from fucking VA. Will we use a new flag for the, this United? Because I think the North Korean and South Koreans are going to be under like one new flag. Yeah, we'll go under our flag. Okay. You know what? We'll add an extra star for all of Canada. What if we turn the stars to little maple leaves? How about this? <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. I'm doing that. That's really cute. I am cute. fucking doing that. That's actually really cute. Or we could go with our flag, but we'll use their national anthem because it's better. Fucking way better. Oh, United States and Canada. I love it. <clears throat> Our fucking anthem is so bad. Our own president didn't know the lyrics. I know. He's going to ban it soon, I think. It's going to be his next mission. <coughs> he gave out the fake uh, uh, awards yesterday, yes. which I didn't see. Did he, get it? Did he do this live or was it on Twitter? What happened? No, it, he did not do it in any fun way. I can't remember. Who, where did he release it? Like on what? There was just like a GOP website. Yeah. But he there was no uh, pomp and circumstances where I was really hoping. Yeah. I was hoping for a red carpet event and making it funny. It would have been really great if like Kid Rock presented one <laughs> and I don't know what other stars they got. Um, I guess one of those karate guys. I don't know what Texas Ranger. OK, like sure. here's Texas Ranger. Uh, Bruce Willis is with us, but he declined. And then Tim. From yeah. Home Improvement. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to be honest. I was less. I was less than impressed with the awards. I also thought he could have went through and did like categories. Remember, he was going to do fake, fake as fake as. Yeah. This is just a top ten list. Yeah, I, mean, I that's mean, Letterman. I guess <laughs> Letterman's back with that whole new fucking Netflix show. I mean, he's folded it in. He's, Not to mention, a good half of these were just like tweets. Like, just one report. Like, this was not like, oh, the New York Times reported. Yeah. Like, most of these were debunked because they were like, just some random reporter tweeted it. Uh, don't don't give it away posted. before I hear it, though. You know, it's very exciting to me. <laughs> Miz is up there with the Oscars. But before we get into it, I'll let Vito read them off. Um, I can't believe that the Republicans are upset that the government might get shut down. Didn't they always want the government shut down? Wasn't that the whole point? Yeah, I thought they loved being the a conservative. Yeah. Is like, let's States. get rid of the government. Yeah, I don't That's even it. like myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're self-hating politicians. Um, but uh, I thought that they would be like, "Good, shut the fucking government down." I love it. That would be the angle to take. Not, please don't shut down the government. <laughs> um. And after all this shit that we've been worried about North Korea. They in South Korea get along like fucking twin sisters. There's nobody going to get a fucking missile shot. I'm going to just say something to the island state of Hawaii. Don't put your fucking kid into a manhole <laughs> until you hear from us. Sirius XM. <laughs> Any one of our 200 stations. <laughs> All right, Vito, give it to me because I, I know nothing about this. All right, number 11. In Trump's words, Russia collusion. Russian collusion is... Perhaps the greatest hoax perpetrated right. on the American people. But you're not nailing a specific person with that. He just said the Russian collusion like story. I don't want to take forever okay. with this. But that's, that's a problem. Just, okay. I'm saying that's a problem from a yeah. real point of view. And it's, it's also like an ongoing, you know, like they're they're still investigating that. So Yeah, but I don't care about the details. I care about the joke part of it. I think you got to blame it on one person. Maybe the first person who brought it up. All right, go ahead. The New York Times reports that the Trump administration has hidden a climate change study. <laughs> I didn't even hear about that one. That's, <laughs> that's, pretty, yeah, that's, pretty, that's fake news to me. <laughs> and you're breaking fake news, guy. That's your yeah, thing. I love fake news. Some people don't like it. I'm all about it. Okay. Number nine, CNN report that former FBI director James Comey would dispute President Trump's claim he was told he was not under investigation. Uh, again, who cares? That's not a good one. Number eight, Newsweek report that Polish First Lady Agata Kornhauser Duda did not shake Trump's hand. <laughs> what the fuck? Is, first of all, <laughs> just the name alone is good. Yeah. That's the first one I like, Duda. Yeah. She, like, the reason was like, she, sh she shook the hand later. They kept saying, she did shake it. It just wasn't what you guys show. Number yeah, I don't care who shakes anybody's <laughs> hand. That never means anything to me. I agree. Straight fake news. <laughs> Number seven, CNN's retracted report claiming Anthony Scaramucci had Russia ties. I don't remember that, but you're the one who fired him in fucking 11 days. <laughs> I, have I mean, to get Russia one ties. thing that we all agree on is Scaramucci's dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why yeah. are you defending him now? <laughs> Number six, CNN's video suggesting Trump overfed fish during his... <laughs> no, that was <laughs> real. That was Prime real. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. <laughs> there's a picture, though. I mean, I just dump it. Do it. It's, it's, it. There's a picture of him dumping food. <laughs> That's one of my favorite Trump days ever. Yeah. And like, look, the guy did laugh. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like a national story. Like they were upset about it. The guy was just like nicely just kind of putting some in. And then Trump just dumped all his fish food. Look, I don't blame Trump. I don't know how to feed a fucking fish properly. <laughs> the only way I know how to feed a fish is if there's a hook on it. <laughs> you think they'd like to have all the food at once? I, I mean, guess just the big fish get it. I think he should be proud of this one. It was funny. <laughs> it was very Trump. He got bored with this. You're yeah. going to be feeding fish. Oh, that's an embarrassing thing, thing to do to ask the president to feed fucking fish. <laughs> <laughs> Look, fish eat without you being there anyway. <laughs> he just hates like, this. He he hates, hates, I don't blame him. He hates feeding fish. <laughs> it's not like feeding a bear or something. He got bored and just dumped it. Here, <laughs> fuck this. Let's get out of here. Look, he's waving. Look, let's yeah. go back inside. I don't want to be out here with this shit. It seems like real notes, and I like it. I don't think he should be ashamed of it. I, should, I think he should embrace it. Something can't be fake if we see it, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
So where did this get released that we never found out? I know that he released like there were reporters outside the White House going back to their corresponding people. So I think he, he just released done this live on Fox. I know. GOP, Fox GOP dot com. Yeah, Jeez, that's, that was the website. I said that early on. But like everybody looked at me like I was nuts. But I know that people like Fox News had like a reporter outside the White House reading off the winners. That's not no. exciting. Not no. at all. It should be a night. There should be some fucking lobster up front. Yeah. Red carpet. I thought they were going to have fun with it. Opening number. Well, if they had Scaramucci there to just fucking to get the award. <laughs> he, he no, make he's it not up. getting the award. No, but he could just go up there and say You're going to give it to the, the reporter <laughs> who did, made the fake news report. I like the idea of you take it out of the political and you bring in some fucking celebrities. I'm sure there's a country music star, too. <laughs> get Brady. He has a great get a MAGA hat. <laughs> Who's Brady? Tom Brady. <laughs> okay. Tom Brady didn't even show up at the White House last year. He's dead to Trump. There's your fucking fake news. I think if Brady <laughs> says, where's that MAGA hat again? He's going to, Trump will love him again. <laughs> See how he fucking just digs his hole deeper? You know what? You're back on night. Oh, come on. <laughs> I was looking forward to being breaking news. Hey, hey stay night, man, with me. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do have to fight the day, man. <laughs> Let's go, day, man. Let's go. Number five, the Washington Post, Dave Weigel, tweeting that Trump's December rally in Pensacola, Florida, wasn't packed with supporters. I fucking love that. <laughs> Just like, who gives a shit? <laughs> but that's a good one. And he nailed that guy. Yeah. But uh, they showed up later. It was like before. Yeah. He, he, he shot took it. a picture before yeah. everyone got there. I can take a picture of Bon Jovi fucking concert <laughs> 45 minutes before. <laughs> Look how late everybody got into the Steelers game. I know. I saw that. The end zones were fucking empty. Well, it's cold as shit, man. Still, it's the playoffs. Mm, you're right. But you know what? Those people in Pittsburgh are used to the playoffs. That becomes a problem. Jacksonville is going buck wild right now. This is their shit. The people of New England are going like this. Well, we better not lose the Super Bowl. Because <laughs> now I can win. Fucking seven years in a row, the Patriots have gone to the championship game. That's a mind fuck. It just doesn't happen. Come on, you know. Number four. This is a recent one. Time reports that Trump removed a bust of Martin Luther King Jr. from the Oval Office. That isn't recent. No, that that happened was, last no. year. This I thought that literally happened last month. No, no, it happened last January. Yeah. I'm just as soon as you try to fucking color this thing, yeah. you blew just it. give us the straight facts. He fact. just tried to fake. say that was breaking news. Yeah. No, I news. never said recent breaking news. I just said recent news. It was a year ago. But that one, that one, they say time. But again, this was just like an idiot reporter who was standing in the room like, I don't see it. And, and he then tweeted. he tweeted out. And then he goes like a few, <laughs> like within an hour, like with a few minutes, he goes, oops, someone was just standing in front of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> But that guy fucked up. But you're saying it never made it in Time Magazine. Right, exactly. You can't say like Time reported it. Still, but that was a, that's a legitimate <laughs> mistake. You get the award. Fake news tweet. And here's what could be great. So you have the award show, right? And everyone's wearing a, a, a pin that said, Time's not up yet, motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, God. <That's> big pin. <laughs> I didn't think about pin size. <laughs> Number three, CNN report that Trump campaign had early access to hacked documents from WikiLeaks. Okay, that's a good one. I don't mean, I don't, I don't yeah. remember who did or what, but I'll give you a legit on that. Number two, ABC News, Brian Roth, bungled report on former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Yeah, but Mike Flynn has already fucking proved he's a gangster. Yeah. And then he's already turned against T-Rump. And number one, the New York Times, Paul Krugman, claiming markets would never recover from Trump presidency. No, that's not fake news. That's an opinion. That was an opinion piece. It's a bad opinion. And you know, like, yeah, and it was incorrect. But that's like a columnist who gives his opinion. That's not fake news. It's just like uh, he was wrong. Right. That's like we call Chris's fucking NFL predictions fake news. Right. No, <laughs> they're just a stupid person. Right. <laughs> so I don't think he should have saved that one for number one. He should have that bust, maybe. And, uh, is Paul Krugman who did it? <laughs> yes. He's a strange fucking little dude anyway, man. That's so fucking wired. <laughs> and there was one time that he was fighting with, I think it was Bill O'Reilly. And you should see him shaking like, the fear like Bill O'Reilly was going to beat him up. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious TV. <laughs> they should have had the Russian piss uh, dossier. 
don't in this think thing. he wants to bring any attention. <laughs> He's bringing up a bunch of fake I think news. the truth of it is, I think it speaks very loudly. It's not fake news. <laughs> no. We're not putting it on here. It's no not- one <laughs> proved that he liked to get pissed on. And he's a germaphobe. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Rob. Rob, what's up? Hey, Bennington. Hey. Um, I got an opinion about the Steelers game, man. My wife and I tried to go, and it was just horrific to try to just get down to the stadium. Um, people trying to get in front of other people just to get to the exit ramp when I've been waiting there for 10 minutes and not barely even moving like five feet. People cutting in front of people. Wait, so you had tic- to- you had tickets and you didn't get to the game. I no, I got to the game, but after the Jaguars had already scored, I didn't even get into the the stadium until like five these, minutes, ten minutes after the game started. These are not the old Steeler fans. The old Steeler fans used to sleep out on the fucking street the night before. Yeah, you should have been in the parking lot hammered three hours <laughs> before the game even fucking happened. It's your choice if you want to drink I got or three not. Kids to worry about before I even leave. They give them to some actual people. <laughs> <laughs> Not somebody who has other things above the Steelers. Be a fan. Yeah, I'm going to say this. The Steelers fans are the reason why the Jags scored so many points. And they were booing, according to a guy who does want to go public, Roethlisberger. <laughs> really? I didn't personally hear it myself, but he swore to it. They fired the offensive coordinator, but... Yeah. And there's some talk. Mike Tomlin will get fired, but... These motherfucking Steelers do not fire head coaches. Never. It never happens. I think they had like four head coaches in the history of their team. Really? Yeah. I don't know why they fired the defensive coordinator when they still, he still threw five touchdowns against the Jaguars are a ridiculously good defense. Because of the fucking fourth down fucking calls. Either he threw a long pass for a touchdown or it was a terrible run. That fucking weird pitch probably cost him the game. Cost and the game, but that's not the that's not the head coach who makes those decisions. No, it's not. But do you know what? You're in charge of your fucking team. You know right. what I mean? Like every time that Vito fucks up, gets caught stealing something from here, I got to hear about it. Mm-hmm. I can't get around that. It never was my idea to bring Vito in. But you know what? I always say this: the buck stops here with Ronnie B. And he said to me, he goes, uh, "I don't want to say which boss it was. It was Wiki." He goes like this. Tell fucking your garlic eater that he can't go around. And I go, I got it. I'm on it. I go, I'll fucking scream in his goddamn face right now. He's like, tell him to stop throwing pizzas and get in there and fucking do his job. (laughs) Uh, 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 um. Uh, Bruce, what's up? Fly Eagles, fly. Screw the Steelers fans. But, Ronnie, if you watch the whole video of the Trump koi fish thing, 10 seconds before Trump dumped his food into the pond, the Japanese prime minister did it first. And he he, followed protocol. No, here's the thing. (laughs) First of all, I don't know if there's protocol protocol. fish food. (laughs) But the Japanese guy only did a little bit, and Trump went hard. But why can't we just laugh and have fun? You know what I mean? This is great. I I was proud of Trump. It was funny. I'm proud of him for dumping that fucking... news. And if you got fish food, what do you do? What are you going to do? Put your hand over that tank? And just... It's not a tank. It's a koi pond. pond. Fake news. It was a koi pond. Now, uh, Bruce, you're an Eagles fan, right? Of course I am. Give me the final score of the game. Uh, 21-13, fly, Eagles, fly. I like it. I like Your that. Your mouth got zero. Easy peasy, done. Go away, Minnesota. We're coming in Minneapolis. Going to take over that town. We're going to get hoagies and cokes, and maybe we even go into the cold water. You're right. You know what? I'm going to agree with you now. It was fucking, he followed protocol. <laughs> that was fucking fake news you know before. What? Because he re- he just reported real news about the Eagles, so that's why I believe it. Teddy, Minnesota, what do you say, buddy? Team of Destiny. Fuck that guy who just hung up. Fuck him. <laughs> Talk about a destiny. Fake news. Eagles are going to lose by about, I'd say, nine points. I don't know what the score is going to be. I'm not going to report it. Maybe it'll be nine him. to nothing. Maybe that'll be it. <laughs> but they do look, and I've, I've been saying be this for a long time, they seem like the team of destiny. Now, uh, Daddy, just give me this. You're watching the game. There's, what, 10 seconds left. The game is over. Let's face it. 
That well, fucking pass happens. My girlfriend and I start, yeah. we start cleaning up the kitchen. We're walking away. I'm like, not again. I mean, I'm, I'm in You're my, crushed. So I've, I've, I, I just pissed. Just like, you know, now we got to, here's the part that sucks, is we got to have all these fuckers come in here into town, and we got to be nice to them. Fuck them. You know what? So we were all pissed off, and, and then we're watching, and, and it was like, we need something. And all of a sudden, that shit happens, and we're just, just like uh, uh, Griffith on the sidelines, if you've seen the video. Our hands are on our head. Our eyes are like silver dollars. I've never seen anything like that. It was like divine intervention. Nothing exists. You know what? You were right about that. That's why I've been calling them Team of Destiny. You don't have to do something great. If God's on your side, you know what I mean? Sure. I mean, what's the whole point? If you're great, why do you even need God on your side? But that fucking, I've never seen anyone fall down instead of making, the, the closest I can come to this in sports is Bill Buckner. Yeah. Bill Buckner did something. Yeah. And, and I've never forgotten the Bill Buckner moment. And I'm not obviously oh, a I, fucking Mets fan. You know what I mean? But you don't forget that. And that's how no, we're going to feel about that the, play. The William, uh, the, the Vikings ought to just draft or uh, pick that kid up because I'll tell you what, he's he's a hero in this town. <laughs> hey, you ought to at least put him on local sports. <laughs> he's done more for Minnesota than any other player this year. Um, well, next to ten. Hey, hey, and you feel like if if the Vikings are playing at home, that's that's a given that you're going to win that game. No matter no, who I you're playing. Say that. I just said they're going to. No, no, no. You don't no, think no, they're no. going to win the Super Bowl? I didn't say that. It all depends. If they, if they get uh, an opportunity to take a shot at Jacksonville, they got a good shot at it. If they got. Uh, if they, if we've got uh, New England coming into town. I'll tell you what. If we can get to Brady and knock him on his ass. Now you sound like anybody else out there. you got to either believe or not. Is God on your side or not? You know what I mean? Like, there should be. This whole thing. You don't watch Hoosiers to watch them lose. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Hoosiers had God on their side. Ten foot, same as our gym. Same as our gym back home. Uh, TJ, what's up? Hey, about that Steelers game. Yeah. Um, the security was on point because there was a guy the night before that threatened to shoot the place up, and so the security was crazy yeah and everybody was everybody was layered up and there was twice as much security because some crazy guy said he was gonna shoot himself and then kill himself he didn't even seem like he was a football fan either and he was in texas yeah this is a guy talking nuts just a crazy person but you can't take any idiot fucking you know i mean for granted you can't be like oh fuck him he's down in texas he ain't gonna go all the way up here uh darren darren in texas Hey, what up, Bennington? It's been a while. Hey, uh, hey, Chris, take a look at, uh, speaking of the Steelers, what the bakery in Jacksonville did for uh, Pittsburgh. But uh, I wanted to talk to you guys. Uh, the doctor on CNN, Sanjay Gupta, came out, and he's like, uh, based on what I'm hearing from uh, Trump, he's got heart disease. He saw heart disease. Oh, yeah, I saw Fucking that craziness. Hilarious. He said yeah, I'd give him five years. <laughs> Somebody put a comment out, and they're like, Sanjay Gupta's making a late entry for the award. <laughs> I know. I, I couldn't believe it when I was watching. He's like, I'll give him five years. My fucking heart of his just implodes. <laughs> uh, what's his bakery, Chris? Uh, it's a bakery that's sending, uh, that sent to Ben Roethlisberger seven turnovers because of all the turnovers. I'll eat those fucking turnovers mm. right now. Yeah. Mock me out if you want, as okay. long as you don't spit on them. What kind of uh, filling are we talking about here? It's like apple. Apple, blueberry, and cherry. Mm, nice. I don't like cooked fruit. I don't like when the fruit's cooked. I think you're cooking out all the goodness. I don't mind That's cook. why I like a juice. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're getting fresh. you're getting rid of the the meaty of it. You it's know the healthier. fruit meat. Oh, me stew that fruit down. <laughs> to they the always say that form. you'd be better off eating an apple than drinking apple juice because uh -huh. all the good fucking vitamins are in the fucking yeah. you in have the fruit no, meat. You have no fiber. So you're you're just taking in sugar and you're not getting anything. You good think fiber. fucking Chris even knows what fiber is? I don't know what you're talking about? <laughs> he fucking shits every two weeks and and then it's like a damn explosion. What kind of roughage do you eat, Chris? Zero. Zero roughage. Do you roughage eat by like what? Like a salad? Yeah. Leafy yeah, I greens. I don't need leafy kale. Greens. No. He's not Swiss gay. Swiss chard. He's not gay. <laughs> Swiss chard. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Are you kidding? How do you not know what Swiss chard is? I don't know what Swiss chard is. What are you fucking? What are you typing for? Be here in the moment. I don't know what a Swiss. It's chard a leafy is. green and okay. it's delicious. All right, it's like a kale. 
It's but it's better. Oh. How's it Personally. like a kale? Were you saying it's fucking <laughs> leafy green? Yeah. Okay. Look who it is, everybody. Hard wreck Johnny. Yeah. Johnny, it's been a long time since we talked to you. I don't think we've talked to you once in 2018. I don't think so. This may be my first 2018 call. It's all about Johnny Gogo now, let's face it. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I get it. It's fine. You can do your next show at his place. His place is. He's your boss. He told us. <laughs> <laughs> no. His place is an office in New Jersey. It'd be really awkward. <laughs> they have a nice conference room, though. Well, what's awkward about his office? Uh, just well, doing a big a big show like that in someone's office would be weird. Oh, okay, I didn't get that. I thought he had a weird office. <laughs> no, he yeah, doesn't mind going and doing an office party. Mm-hmm. Be nice. <laughs> so, Johnny will never beat last year anyway. We probably shouldn't even do another one. We should probably go out as legends. Yeah, <laughs> we can't do we Woodstock talk. every year. It's, I like to say it's impossible to talk that show. I thought of an idea though no. that would fucking bring down the roof. Really? Mm-hmm. Play off another game show. It's in my mind. I thought of two things that'll blow the fucking place up. I can't wait to discuss. You'll hear about it next year. What? What? (laughs) Why? (laughs) Because it stays here. This is my only fucking security. We need to go to work on this. I have to stay with the show. (laughs) No, honestly, we don't. That's how fucking great it is. Doesn't take any work at all. Just the brilliance of Ronnie B's fucking blow the blow the clouds mind angles. Johnny, what were you calling about today? Uh, are you going to be Talk a Jags a fan? No, I'm not a Jags fan. They got I, your I, old fucking coach. He's the general yeah, manager. He's done a bang-up job. I mean, for a guy that doesn't seem like he has a talent, wherever he goes, yeah, things are good. Yeah. No, he knows what he's doing. I but no one ever throws about. the word genius at him. No, everyone just, mm-hmm. it's like the, at least the, the giant Super Bowls, all, everyone just thinks it's luck. They don't want to use it to Coughlin. You're right. No, it's luck, I mean... Or Eli and the way that they handled, you know, it was a good game plan. So who comes up with a game plan? The coach. And it wasn't his game plan to have a fucking ball stick to someone's helmet. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, Eli avoid four sacks. <laughs> Just keep running around like a crazy person. <laughs> throw the ball as high as you can. It'll probably definitely stick to his helmet. <laughs> And then the next play, got to be totally wide open. No one even remembers that. No one <laughs> remembers that. They feel like the helmet catch was the touchdown. Yeah. That's how crazy yeah, yeah. people are. They, no, but they have this big game plan that you, you, someone said it earlier. I mean, he gets a Brady. He's not, you know, he doesn't like to get yeah, hit. All right, but you're being born but now, Johnny. I'd like, to go, I'd like to go back to Mike Tomlin. I work with a number of Steeler fans, and we've had a discussion for quite a while that He's a good coach for players, but he is not a good in-game coach, and he proved it again. The onside kick, he did some, he met some, he, he loves to do the two-point conversion. He tries to be too cool for the school sometimes, and I think it's caught up with him. I mean, and you're right, they're not going to fire him. They've had Chuck Knoll, Bill Cower, and him. Those are their three coaches for that team. Like, they, you know, they, have, they don't fire coaches. They keep them for a long, long time, you know, it's it's just their thing, and I just don't think Tomlin's a great in-game coach. And you know they're going to fire the guys around him because you you know they don't fire him, and you can't fire the players. Johnny, so let's get the coordinator. You know. Johnny, this isn't the fan. Yes. Okay, you got to give us a fun fucking call. <laughs> All those things that you're saying is true, <laughs> but where's the fun? You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Let's just admit something right now, Johnny. You're a racist. And you don't believe black people racist. can coach. You like being a racist? I think black people can coach just fine. How come when I go into the Hard Rock, there's not a single black employee? That is true. Uh, Earl Douglas is mm-hmm. an employee at the Hard Rock, and he is his name actually uh, is Black Earl Douglas. That's what you call him. So that, that seems that like racism. Because he was the only black <laughs> guy. Yeah. There's another Earl. <laughs> and they just call him Earl, not even White Earl. <laughs> He dresses in black. That's why he's. And by the way, the two the two Steeler fans who I work with just yelled. They don't think that Tom was a good coach either. Yeah, I don't think so. But everyone either. loves the way his eyes look so fucking wired during the games. And <laughs> he does have those big eyes. And he's very chill. You know what I mean? Seems he like a cool dude. Spit. <laughs> he had the spit frozen in his beard for at least a half of the game. Like so much. I saw like, that. Coach, yeah. got, coach, I really you got wish. Spit in your beard, coach. Coach, you got spit in your beard. Just There's no talking to him during a fucking game. <laughs> There's no way they. Here's the thing: they, you don't lose that game if you're focused on Jacksonville. They were fucking thinking of. They're like, we're gonna kick Brady. Yeah, they were worrying about the next game. 
They were worried about the next game. All right, I got to go to break here, Johnny, but thanks for your serious, in-depth look (laughs) at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, You got to be excited because uh, Howard's putting Bon Jovi in the Hall of Fame. That's got to be a a huge... Are you going this year? I don't know if I'm going this year. I I did just pick up a ticket to get... uh, I just get invited to the, the Grammy thing for Fleetwood Mac. That's going to be a fun night with some pretty cool performances. Where's that at? I don't know if I'm, that's at Radio City. They're doing it. It's the Music Cares. Like every year, they do the big Music Cares as a big charity event. So I'm going to go get my tuxedo, get all dressed up fancy. Mm, nice. And then, yeah, and they have like, I think they have like, like I think 15 different performers who are going to do Fleetwood Mac songs, and then they're going to close the show out with a couple of tunes. How about this? You just have Fleetwood Mac play, and I don't have to look. Yeah, that sounds good. That's some fucking country artist singing <laughs> fucking Gold Dust Woman. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going to that show, though, but I ain't wearing a tux, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> I ain't with the man yet. I'm not that Republican, Johnny. All right, talk to you later, my friend. Later. Uh, Peace, Johnny. There's something I've been trying to get Johnny into uh, for a while now. Because I worry about him over there in Jersey. It's a very high crime state. Um, a crime is committed every, I think it's eight seconds. Oh, my God. In Jersey. Now, here's the weird part. It's the same dude. <laughs> He's fast. It's always Artie. <laughs> but anyway, in all seriousness, you got to think about Ring. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. Today, over a million people. Use the amazing Ring video doorbell to help protect their homes. Ring knows home security begins at the front door, but it doesn't end there. Now they're extending that same level of security to the rest of your home with the Ring floodlight cam. Just like Ring's amazing doorbell, floodlight cam is a motion-activated camera and floodlight that connects right to your phone with HD video and two-way audio that lets you know the moment anyone steps on your property. See and speak to visitors. Even set off an alarm right from your phone. Uh, With Ring's floodlight cam, when things go bump in the night, you'll immediately know what it is. Whether you're home or away, the Ring floodlight cam lets you keep an eye on your home from anywhere. Ring floodlight offers the ultimate in home security with high visibility floodlights and a powerful HD camera that puts security in your hands. With Ring, you're always home. Save up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit when you go to ring.com slash comedy. Ring.com slash comedy. That's ring.com slash comedy. Hey, is Dan come in to talk about this Caroline's thing? He came in, uh, oh, this way. He's not going to come back again? I didn't see. I can come back in. I didn't see it. You <laughs> didn't see. I changed my sentence <laughs> mid sentence. I think what he, his initial reaction was: I didn't see that idea in my brain because that's the way he thinks about his thoughts. You're the best, Chris. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> I wish you could pick football, but other than that, <laughs> oh, I'm picking football. I'm picking tomorrow. No, he means okay. correctly. No, I mean, yeah, we know correct. you try. Yeah. You're going to do it on the air tomorrow. Do it on the air tomorrow. Yeah. Now, Gail, you have to take a break because you got another interview during our show. I do. I have a big Gail Meets Girls coming up this weekend that will be brand spanking new, uh, which we will announce after I'm done with my interview. Now, so you'll be going to like 45 or so during the show. Yeah. Maybe that's when we should talk about things that you don't like to talk about. Yeah. Football or how stupid girls are. Yeah, or... anything. I mean, any like sexist feelings that you've had. Yes. How about like? <laughs> how about we just say every sexual predator is falsely accused? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Absolutely. You know how quickly Vito would fall into that. He's way more misogynistic than Chris. You Thanks. Think so? Finally, thank you. Someone said it. No, Chris is always saying how, like, you know what? This. I could say this, but like, yeah, it would be like it would ruin it. But I bet if you even do it a day or two from now, they would forget it. And if you put the bait out there, let's okay, see who it. picks it up. I think they both will quickly. I, I think they both will take the bait. I think that they would go along with any of the pack. I think they would turn into racism fucking talk. Very really? Quickly. No. Definitely, no. Chris. <laughs> I'm the least racist person but I know. Vito might go, that my friends. Great. <laughs> yeah, I don't want my friends hearing me say all that stuff. And he's, he's racist, Not that you don't too. feel it. You just don't want your friends yeah, hearing you. I mean, is, oh, because... <laughs> Well, he's the, he's but he's too. worse because he's always bringing up his black friends. That's just my friends. Those are those are the but, only friends I have. You don't even have friends. If they're really your <laughs> friends, then you say my friends. You don't say my black friends. Yeah, because he just wants to be seen as cool. Because all he does is hang out with black dudes. 
So you think that was what made me cool? Eric Trump said this. <laughs> My father is the least racist person I've ever known. He goes, he doesn't see color, just green. And I'm oh. like, that's kind of racist, dude. When yeah. you're acting, when you're the president, and you're like, I don't care about poor people. I let me know ways. about that money. Yes, because by the way, green is white. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> your mouth to God's ear. <laughs> All right. So tomorrow, doing that short window that you, and do me a favor, don't take Jen. Oh, okay. I so. need someone to record. I can't do this on my own. Take Nothing that technically. idiot over there, over there, that fucking racist idiot, Vito. Oh, sexist. No, You're I like a girl's them. environment for this. I could be a girl. You can't get more girly than Vito. Am I right, Chris? Got him, Rod. <laughs> Defensive to both of us. <laughs> uh, I will tell you something. I finally got to see the David Hockney paintings. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, there was a rodent right next door, Michelangelo. I would just walk through them like I don't give a shit. I look over at the Michelangelo. I go, why doesn't anybody make any fucking big deal out of this sketcher? You know what I mean? Go stand at the end of the park and sketch people's faces. <laughs> I saw someone on the subway doing that. Now, Hockney, the weird thing about this, I'm not moved by 90% of his fucking paintings, but those L.A. Be Beverly Hills paintings, they just destroy me. They might, like, speak to something very subconscious with you. I think it's my addictive personality. I think it's like, oh, wouldn't the greatest life just to be in the backyard, in a nice backyard? Because it, it seems like everyone's high. Yeah. And it seems like they're listening to Steely Dan to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, look at that. I saw yeah. that painting. Really? Yeah. Here's something else about painting that ham and eggers like us don't understand they're never precise about it it's never as exact as you try to be when you're painting right you can see like oh he spilled a little paint here and this line is off but that isn't what they're going for but the reason the reason that they're able to achieve what they do is like that they un they have an understanding of light and shadow where we're yeah. thinking of like draw the lines of the thing that it is, right? Well, you're like a face has like a nose and lips and eyes, and then you're thinking of it that way. But then they're thinking about shadow and light and the way those things change and modify with your eye. And that, that's not something I can... I'm, that's why I stick to the stick figure. It's what the body looked like. I, you know, I, I tell you, I don't have the... I don't have the the ability to say why something sets a tone or what you know what I mean. Because like okay, so let's look at this painting in particular. This is the Hockney where the guy in the pinkish red jacket is looking into the pool, and look at the way the guy's like right heel, like the way the light is hitting yeah. that. Now this is not a literal painting; it doesn't look like a photograph. And yet that is like something that looks so realistic in a weird way. And also the thing of the pool, it feels like a pool looks, you know what I mean? Like no one's ever done that before. The splash, all that stuff. No one had ever done that before. No one ever, ever figured that out. And then the other one I really like was just the sprinklers, the perfect setup sprinklers. But uh, again, it's always a weird thing when you've seen a picture of a painting your whole life. And then you're actually standing in front of it. Phenomenal. It's a phenomenal feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah that's that so cool. Yeah, that destroyed me. Was it really busy? I, I know it's been packed there. <sighs> Not packed because of the time of the year that it is. I couldn't get in in December. Couldn't get near the fucking place. During the Christmas break, I went over there. Freezing cold day. Sub-freezing. And, uh... Lines fucking that just went on forever. I just get out of the cab. I said, fuck you. I bang on the fucking cab window. I go, you just got a new fare, me. <laughs> then I went there to the Lexington candy shop for uh, lunch. Really one of the last of the old school yeah. uh, New York City thing. So great day. Great day. And Larry and Laurie had me all prepped for it because they got me that beautiful book. Oh, nice. And the book was on sale at the museum. Oh, that's so cool. And I'll say this, that set them back a pretty penny. 
I was very surprised when I saw that. I well. hope you shoplifted that book. <laughs> <laughs> but every once in a while, you see something like that. And you're like, that's the real thing. This is not a reproduction. Yeah. I'm not looking at a poster. This is where this dude actually set that down. And I don't know what skill you'd rather have in the world than to be a, a great painter. I know. I, I put painting and a great piano player on the same level where it's like, I feel like there's something there where it's kind of universal. Right. It's like like universe- everybody can do it. To some extent. Right. And it's like, you know, but it's like, if you do it well and you do it impressive, people who can't do it are just like, how the fuck? Like, whenever I see someone playing piano and just really fucking playing piano, I'm like, I, that's so beyond me. I wish I just had that skill. Isn't that weird, though, when you meet a lot of them and they're not even cool? Yeah. They're just like nerdy piano players. Yeah. You're like, you know how much fun you could be having with this? You could be at every party and fucking work in the room. Fucking chicks would just be like, I'm leaving with the piano player. Yeah. And, you, and you're not pulling that off, dude, because you've got half the fucking skill set. <laughs> now, the thing about David Hockney, too, is unlike most other painters, it doesn't seem like he has to do the stupid, oh, I'm wearing a cat on my head, or you know what I mean? He's just painting shit like a, and he's like a regular just older gay dude from England painting but it doesn't seem like he has to dress crazy he doesn't have to do you know he doesn't have to lay in the street right. he just paints and people are moved by Man I really like that one a lot I, I love, love like all. all the architecture that he's depicting too like I don't even know what you call that that kind of like modern southwestern kind of And you know what else that he had there and this was actually very interesting to me. Well, that's that um, 1960s yeah. L.A. look, yeah. which was the clean look of my lifetime. Like when you would look at stuff, Palm Springs or whatever, it looked like we were in the space age. Mm-hmm. You know, architecture started to be like cool rather than just like, oh, this is an important, strong building. You know what I mean? Before that, everything had to be brick and, not, and marble. And also, like, not intricate. Like, it's just clean lines right. instead of... Clean lines. It's about a view. It's about creating a kind of space that they have here. It's built around the pool. So all that shit just looked like, especially if you lived on the East Coast when I was a kid, L.A. was just like a dream. It was yeah. more of a dream than a place. The whole country was California dreaming. If I'm, <laughs> I'm going to coin a phrase right now. <laughs> Everybody was California dreaming. <laughs> and we still think of L.A. that way, even though it doesn't remind us of that anymore. Yeah. You still, yeah. that perception, the Beach Boys, the Beverly Hillbillies, that whole thing from the 60s, people still think of as L.A. It yeah. still feels like California girls, the people. Um, all right, I forgot where I was going with this, but. I'm so glad I got to see those paintings. It is a really surreal experience if, when you see a, a famous painting in real life for the first time. And then, by by the way, I did walk through the rodents and uh, and uh, your mom jumped into some other picture. But I, I only like to go for like one thing when I go to a museum. I don't like to on... be overwhelmed with all the fucking things. Yeah, you know, it's difficult. It's especially the uh, the difficult thing about visiting a city and going oh we need to go to this museum and then it's the first time you've gone and you're like oh, it would take me a week to really appreciate everything that's in this place that's why it's great with going to your like a local museum where you're like i've seen i've been to that room nailed that mm-hmm. you know what i mean and then you can kind of focus and on next it. time i'll go to the other place yeah. yeah unless you're just like hey we're just killing time walking around a museum and hopefully something will catch your eye but you won't appre- i mean you work you walk past Tons of priceless art all the time. Like, yeah, I saw it, you know. So good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Love it. Like this from Sass Tech stuff. Because <laughs> that's how the Met is. Like, yeah. You know, I'm like, how the fuck do you get out of here? And I'm walking through this fucking weird Egyptian shit. Oh, I know. You know? That's and always the stuff like, that, like, I, that's always the weirdest one because if you're going for a specific artist, and you're not paying attention, you'll walk through those rooms and that has no, like, it doesn't resonate right. with you. And it's Sunday in the park with George and shit. <laughs> you're, just, you're just walking by it. Oh, why is there only one fucking entrance in this place? There should be eight. 
It does bug me about that. It's a giant building, and you got to go all the way back to where you started. Maybe they do that so art thieves don't have different exit routes. Uh, I, I don't even think there is an art thief anymore. I think it's a fucking made up bullshit thing. Just like if movie. I stole this painting, right? Yeah. How the fuck am I going to sell it? <laughs> to who? A Russian, maybe? Like a, a rich Russian. That's racist. I'm just saying they it find is a lot of fucking art. unbelievably <laughs> racist. It's not racist. Dude, as soon as they find out, they go to Russia and get it. The Russian government isn't going to be like, hey, we protect our art thieves <laughs> over here. <laughs> You got that fair and square. <laughs> he went in there in the middle of the night, all dressed in black. He went run underneath the <laughs> He fucking crawled underneath those beams. <laughs> now, here's something stupid though. I'll watch any movie about an art thief. Any. I'm not you know, yeah. also a diamond thief. Anybody who's not walking into the place and just yelling stick him up. Yeah. But a guy who's going in, he's got a fucking plan. Yeah. I appreciate the plan. And they appreciate working at night. That's why Ocean's Eleven was fun. It's just a bunch of dudes. Don't say that in front of Vito. Oh, come. Vito. He hates that movie. He that fucking calls based. it the fucking worst movie of all time. <laughs> One thing I noticed about Vito, none of us agreed with him <laughs> when it comes to his taste in music or movies. <laughs> That's because he needs to stick with what he knows. TV. He's the TV guy. He is TV guy. I haven't gotten a bad fucking swing with him on that. The day man knows fucking TV. Let's face it. Let's all face that. I'll fucking get it. You know what? I'll get a contract in here right now and make everybody sign it. A non-disclosure. Day man's a reference to FX is It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Okay. You fucking think that he knows everything. Oh, did you see what got canceled yesterday? The Tiggs show. I saw Amazon was getting rid of a bunch of shows. Yeah, but I'm bringing up Tig here. Okay? <laughs> he I mean, Tig's the one that we've met before. We didn't meet a bunch of people. Yeah. Why? What else did they get rid of? Uh, they got rid of Tig show, and then they got rid of two other shows. I forgot which what? ones. Uh, uh, I love guy? Dick, I think. Yeah, I love Dick. I loved I love Dick. Yeah, I know. And not surprisingly, the Jean-Claude Van Damme TV show. I didn't, even I didn't bother oh. watching that. <laughs> 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 now... Yeah, so they didn't get rid of the one that your guy turned me on to about the fucking detective who goes around L.A. Oh, yeah. Looking um, for a serial killer Bosch? of his mom. Yeah, the great Bosch, Bosch show. I see, I see posters for it. I haven't watched Bosch it. Bosch is like his... I've watched every episode. <laughs> you know how we talked about this when you have a show and then whoever you live with gets into that show and then you can't watch the show alone? That show was all for him. I watched a couple episodes and I was like, that's you time. You know what I mean? When you have some time to yourself, go ahead and enjoy Bosch. Me and your mom watched them all. I'm is, like, is Bosch looking just for one serial killer or multiple serial killers? He's a season. lot of shit, but there's yeah. one. See, his mom was killed by a serial killer. That's terrible. So that happened when he was a little kid. He had got put in a group home like Monroe Martin. It was oh, fucking oh, terrible. Sad. And then he went to, well, I found out in the books... He went to Vietnam, but in the thing, he went to Iraq or something. Then he became a detective. And he does, he looks like Davy Lopes to me, if I'm going to be fucking totally fucking honest. He looks like the old Dodger Davy Lopes. And he's always, I mean, he's a loner. And he has this shitty fucking little house. It's a tiny little house, right? right. But it's on stilts, and it looks over L.A. And so the nighttime shots are amazing. But this place looks like... Nothing. Fucking uh, Shaq. Bosch has got to renovate this place. Just put up. No, 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 no. Oh. Leave as oh. is. Uh, okay. Because that's Bosch. He's <laughs> a fucking loner. Yeah. He doesn't even have people over. Sometimes his daughter. Who gives a fuck about her? I I'm going to be totally that's, honest. I mean, to be honest, those are the, usually the scenes Play I struggle that with. Jesus, Bosch's fucking house is awesome. Now, he got that. <laughs> for He's a detective. <laughs> yeah. He got that. Well, the house is all view, and thank you for recognizing that. He doesn't have a pool. He has a fucking hot tub on the side. Now, here's the thing about Bosch. He got that house because one of his big crimes, right, became a movie, and he got money oh. to tell the story. Yeah. So he turned around and bought this fucking cool-ass place in the Hollywood Hills. That's smart. He didn't piss it away. What's he going to piss it away for? He's not like you. He doesn't have a drug problem. <laughs> hey, does Chris know that Bosch isn't a real person? <laughs> How's Bosch do with the ladies? <laughs> he literally screwed. Money Holy does. shit. Bosch is awesome. His house is awesome. Stop. He gets them, but normally they're criminals. <laughs> they're fucked up. He gets fucking women, but 
He's stupid about it, you know? I guess like any man. He's fucking stupid about it. I mean, that's Bosch for you. Bosch Typical thinks Bosch. with his dick. <laughs> that Bosch. <laughs> Does Bosch have a hemp bracelet? Looks like Yeah, it. I mean, he's pretty cool. All right. That looks dead inside. He loves. Yeah, he is. By the way, too much shit. He His loves, mother got killed by a serial killer. Terrible. You're gonna be fucking jolly after <laughs> what that. What happened to his dad, though? Like he wasn't around. I don't know. I can't remember. That's a good point. I don't even <laughs> thought about this. But J- Bosch loves jazz. Okay. Oh, so he's a listening lot. to jazz in this fucking uh-huh. dope yeah. pad. He loves jazz. But here's the weird thing about him. It kind of seems like he listens to modern jazz, which isn't oh. too cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's not cool at all. <laughs> And then he'll like try to reference it to his daughter, and she's like, "Don't work." Those are my least favorite scenes. And then here's the thing: <laughs> like I said, I guess the books were like he was in Vietnam, and then he was around the '70s, so he still had miles and people like that. Look who it is, Mateo Lang. He's on our show, but it's not ours. Ba 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 ba. Mateo brought me up on stage not too long ago as one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> that made me feel really good. <laughs> I was do, like, yeah, do you like an intro that um, is personal like that or like actually literal? Like that doesn't necessarily set up the audience, but it's like, I love this guy. Here I love, he is. I, love, I like that. What I don't like, here's a dude. Because I give great fucking intros to people. Some people think they can't follow my intros. <laughs> Bosh would never be able to follow. <laughs> Bosh would never be able to follow an intro I gave him. But I'm surprised about Tig, and really, a lot of people aren't even bringing this up. But she was the beginning of the "Let's Get Louie," because yeah. he was yeah. the executive producer. He got her that show, and she was like, "He still needs to." But, you know, let's take. I watched her show too. Was that two seasons it ran? Two. Yes. Thanks, two. Chris, for that fast two. Faster than TV Guide. You know what's interesting about the TIG show is like you never saw a show set in Mississippi. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's just in Mississippi and she's not a fish out of water. You know what it's I mean? Just she's have, just a person who lives in from. Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, she went home. You know, <laughs> people are around. That she grew up with and her relatives. Um, it doesn't go over the top to go like the stereotype of Mississippi. It's yeah. just like, this is where yeah, it is. Mississippi is a place. But she's not like, where do you get sushi around here? Because <laughs> that'd be able to go like this. <laughs> oh, there's a place like about two miles from here. It's pretty good. A lot of California rolls. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be good or bad for you. Because <laughs> people have sushi and Mexican and Chinese, it's just not necessarily right. the best. Yeah. But no one is freaked out by Indian food anywhere. Mm-mm. No. But there was like a time, it's weird that like within my lifetime, sushi went from like a punchline or like a whoa, you eat what yeah. to an option to throw out for dinner, whether you know the person or not. Like you wouldn't think it was weird. If you're like, let's say you're on a business lunch or you're on a date for the first time and you go, okay, so I know a, a great sushi place near here. Like you wouldn't go, oh, I don't want to suggest that with someone I don't yeah. know that might be too adventurous. For you them. would actually just, the, the downside would be you'd be like, these assholes think this is good sushi. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's the only downside. Because that, I mean, when you take someone to a sushi restaurant that's a friend of yours, you want it to be fucking killer. You don't, but if you yeah. go to an American place or a diner, average, you don't yeah. care. But sushi, I do judge people like this is good sushi. I'm like really, because there's fucking cream cheese in here. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had the experience where you take somewhere so, like a, a place, and then that place has a uniquely bad showing, and they normally don't? I don't go to places that have uniquely bad showings. <laughs> They're dead to me. <laughs> That would be, uh, but that would, like, you know, like, bad service that day, yeah. or, yeah. I feel like that always happens to me. Really? We're like, we'll have a place, we'll love the place, then 
friends will come by and be like, well, we know a really great place. And then we go and it's like no one comes over for like a half hour. We have to be like, this never happens. I mean, it never has been like the food has been bad, but it's like yeah, it's service. always like a rare service thing. You're like, it's normally it's just a crazy experience. That's why we come here every week. So. You had a couple places in your neighborhood. I, I think about sometimes I'm like, man, I yeah, this was great. I have a French place. that's really phenomenal. Love that place. I have a falafel place. that's great. I have a. Mexican place, it's great. You got any Costa Rican places, man? <laughs> Maybe me and Chris go over there. <laughs> Brooklyn. You think you might ask her to marry you, Chris? I don't know about that. Why not? I'm very man. happy right now, just as is. Yeah, what do you, but, why do you think the marriage would make it sad? I don't think it'll make it sad. You just what said you, you think, were happy. Then? What's the opposite? <laughs> <laughs> You got him on that. <laughs> you got him and me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would be the downside? You afraid of yourself? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I'm I mean, afraid of you too. We're still only dating for like nine months or something. So what? You don't think it's too fast? Fuck no. Mm-mm, no. I've been moved in with people after a week. Come on. <laughs> I think this thing. Let's fucking roll the dice. Now, let's, let's, track this thing. let's say if it started to become clear to you that she was really commitment driven and really wanted to get married yeah and it seemed like oh my god i could lose her if i didn't get married would you jump into it i would have to consider jumping into it consider that's where you are now yeah <laughs> no, i'm saying point. yes or no, no she but says, you, you she's like know. i need a ring on my finger to know that you're serious about it's this if you, be like, you nice better ring. put a ring on it no stop joking chris yeah if she gave you to put up or shut up, yeah, yeah, you got to make your decision right now. There's a gun to your fucking head. Yeah, and what one do to you your do? dick. <laughs> Both two. I gotta put up then. If she's gonna fucking. Put All right, so I blame it on her. <laughs> oh sure, always a Costa Rican's fault. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to put the pressure on because obviously dude, you're ready to do this. Can I just this? tell you something about the way the world lives? How? If that fucking thought is there, go to it. Go, I would say that because he was saying, how long does it take? I think in no time you know whether you're compatible with someone. Yeah. Some I could go on a fucking weekend trip with someone. By the end of that fucking weekend, yeah. I would know whether I could live with them or not. I actually think that, that that we should rush the first like date trip. Yeah. We should do, push that up because you get a lot of... Um, I like, love that idea. Yeah. Like second or third date should be like you go away for a weekend together. I think that's something the 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 Democrats and Republicans could agree upon. 100%. Forcing people to take a weekend trip. Now, let me tell you something. When I say, well, you know whether you can live with that person. I feel like I can live with anyone. Mm. It's whether they can live with me or not. Because yeah. I'm good at ignoring everything around me. <laughs> It's fucking rare for me to say, uh oh, that's a game changer. I mean, she'd have to be leaving fucking dead fish <laughs> on the couch. Not even in the kitchen? That's your, that's your PC and D. Dead fish on the couch. Deal breaker. I mean, that's got to go. I mean, that's right up there with dead body. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't think there could be a physical attribute at the house that would annoy me. Like whether she was messy, overly messy, or overly clean. Neither one of them bothers me. Yeah. The fuck? You're at the house. Oh, this is how you do? <laughs> it's cool. I mean, I'll tell you something. Wait, I just thought of something. If I wake up in the morning and I get up and you got eight girlfriends there every fucking day. You know what I mean? Oh, Like, two, I don't want so a fucking th- open door policy. That is, that's a big one. Is like, you have to have the same level of either social or antisocial. Yeah. I think that that's very important. Like, my boyfriend and I... We have friends. We like to see them now and again, right. but we have never been the party house, dinner party house, come over for the game. Like once in a blue moon, someone will come over for a situation, but we never have like 10 people over and we'll go to someone else's house and like go have dinner there. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, this is our zone. You right. know what I mean, this is a place. And so Bertie's going to yeah. be weird or whatever. Like, yeah, oh, she's who gonna, are all these people? She's just going to act like she likes yeah. them too much. Yeah. <laughs> and when I know when I go over your fucking house, Bertie can't believe it. She's fucking totally She's so excited. Out. Remember that time Bertie saw me down in Maryland and went crazy? Like She freaked out. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, this is when we go away for Thanksgiving to see my dad's side of the family. So we're down there. We're staying. 
nearby. Separate hotels because you had a dog, and I didn't want to stay at the dog hotel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That wasn't because of your dog. Yeah. Because all the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. sure. Plus, I'm going to say this. The walls are pretty thin there for being a dog hotel. <laughs> like, oh, I yeah, can just, you can hear other dogs yeah. barking. Not even dogs don't bother me. I can hear the maids talking. <laughs> I like a nice, quiet fucking shit. <laughs> so... He's in the parking lot. We're how many feet away? Would you say? Like we're far. We're like a parking. We're lot like a hundred f- fucking one hundred twenty feet away. So I'm out walking her in the morning. They've pulled up. She sees him at like a hundred feet away. I'm out like, having a little smoke. Sure. In a in a place that she would never expect. She thought yeah. she was on her own little vacation, and she's freaking out, pulling me like crazy. Ah. She recognizes him from that far away. But you, like, think in the mind of a dog, she's like, I know that dude. Like, she thinks she's yeah. telling me. I know. Your dad's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it was funny, too, about uh, a dog, is they are so happy to see you, but they never give you a decent goodbye. Yeah, they don't really understand it. There's only two types of dogs. I don't give a shit that you're leaving, dog. Or like, I'm having a panic attack and this is about me. Yeah. But it's not like, I'm going to miss you. It's my not mom like and dad have a little dog. They have a little dog that just stays with my dad all the time because he's not been feeling well. And when I come over, that dog fucking just starts freaking out and tries to get me in the room with him. And then it's just like running around like we're a team. The team is back together. <laughs> And there's no reason for that dog to like me that much either. No. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't seen, seen that dog enough. And then when I go to leave, even if I go outside to have a smoke, the dog's like, please, <laughs> don't fucking go. <laughs> he needs people around him. <laughs> that is weird. Like, they don't they don't have the greeting level for a goodbye. No. Like, they don't just, like, walk up to you, give yeah. you a little lick or, yeah. like, a little cuddle, like, all right, take care. They don't understand that. And Bernie it's all will hug you when she sees you. Really? Yeah. yeah she'll put her she'll, fucking arms she up. She jumps up and it's embraces you. It's fucking freak guy. Adorable. <laughs> and She's then, a hugger. Yeah, she is. First, you got to rub her back, then she hugs you, then I rub on the back. <laughs> yeah. And then she lays down and says, come down to my level. I don't know why people don't like dogs. You hear people that don't like dogs. I mean, I don't like a bad dog. I'm What's like that for your that. PC and D? Yeah. Just like a woman who just despises dogs. Yeah, I don't need them. a dog. But you'd prefer that she liked them. No, I don't care. <laughs> That's her call. But it would just be something you'd be like, I don't understand this about you, but you're no, fine. I wouldn't even it. bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> don't bother me. That's your thing. I also don't feel like I have to change to be with them. You know, I can't change. I'm going to be totally honest. Right. I'm no, I'm doing my head. My, my, uh, I'm in my own head so much that, like I said, you don't only be a distraction. But even so, I think changing for your partner is a young person's game anyway. Oh, yeah. That's like young people are like, oh, I don't know. Like, they kind of like this. Maybe we could do this. But if you're older and you're dating, I feel like everyone has to just accept this is the person I've been molded into. Yeah, We're not going to get any big differences here. That's why a lot of people, they'll get like 50 and they're like, I don't need that. I don't need that. <laughs> and then you're like, really? Uh-uh. I don't even want it. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Cinderella. Uh, that Ashley ba- a Banfield fucking fight was hilarious, right? Oh, yeah. Now, that girl who wrote that article that attacked Ashley Banfield for her mm-hmm. hair and I believe her age. Her age, her hair, her lipstick. Lipstick. Yeah, she was like talking about her <laughs> her highlights. Mm. She's a washed up second wave feminist. Well, first of all, uh, like remember I brought up to you guys about Ashley Banfield. I go, oh, remember when she was the hot CNN thing when there was just basically CNN? Mm-hmm. And you guys were like, uh-uh. But because she wore glasses on TV, everybody thought that she was hot back in the <laughs> oh, late 90s, I yeah. guess. Early 2000s. Um, but this thing of you're washed up, you had a career, that's always insane to me because not everybody, I mean, this woman's had more of a career yeah, that's, than 99% of people who've done news. Right. So for you to say your time is over, it's like a football player saying Joe Montana is what's the difference? He and did you also it. write for Babe magazine. It's right. just like it's not a good idea to point that out. Now, Second, the reason that she did it is she was upset because she criticized the woman who came forward as opposed yeah. to supporting her. But I think that part of this has to do with 
being able to listen to women. It's 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 very hard. It's a very difficult thing. It's a very emotional thing mm -hmm. when you're talking about women when they don't vote and you feel like I know what your best interests are. I'm a woman. You're a woman. Yeah. These are your best interests. And you're you're like, I don't understand how you could vote this way. It's very frustrating. And so it causes this emotional thing when women feel like other women are not supporting. And then in turn, turns out that she's responding in like the worst possible way and the least possible feminist way I can imagine, which is just like pointing out her age and her looks. And All right, but let me play the other side here. Ashley Banfield came in hot. You know what I mean? Yeah. She attacked that person. Yeah. As like, you don't know what you're doing. You need to wait. I mean, she wasn't exactly, she could have pointed out things in a better way. And then also she got a personal email from that girl, which was ugly. But then she read it on the air, knowing sure. that was going to bring more good heat to her, more bad heat right. to the other young person. She, she could have been like, hey, you know what? You're young. You're working this stuff out. Here's how definitely the business but works. the truth of it is she was so obsessed with her highlights being made fun of I think that she was just really out for blood with her no. because she brought that up of all the things she said she brought that up like five times yeah. and like literally one of the times was like and you don't make fun of people's highlights which is That's, it's not a rule that we need to throw <laughs> yeah. out I mean you, you can by the way yeah. anyone can make fun of people's highlights um, and then she called I used that to make fun of Sugar Ray's highlights if I'm going to be <laughs> For good reason. You know, I <laughs> just want to fly. Jaws around me, baby. What a fun I, moment in time. Yeah, well, this <laughs> is great. A fleeting One, five minutes. Two, we went, is this good? And yeah. then five minutes later, we went, nope. Uh, but it was fun. Yeah, but if I hear it now, I don't turn it off. <laughs> um, But yeah, uh, this girl from Bay Magazine, and I think Ashley Banfield would agree with me. She needs to be sexually assaulted. <laughs> she needs to be held down by five Costa Ricans. Specific. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Uh, Dave, what's up? Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, the girl who uh, responded who works at Babes.net, she screwed up big time. Uh, I mean, she sounded really like... Uh, I don't know, not classy at all whatsoever. I mean, and, you know, she sounded a little too not very mature even for that matter. And she's a young person who yeah. works for babe fucking dot com, which yeah. nobody had heard. I thought it was about yeah, Babe Ruth. Whatever. I went there once by mistake because I'm like, who else did he play for? Did he end right. up playing for the... And, like, I also and get... I think you know, yeah. he should be just put in a room with Aziz Ansari. I think we should really... I'd say he's letter. doing it forever. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. There you go. Uh, look, if I had to be stuck in a room with anybody, it's Aziz. <laughs> I would like to be the doctor who said, Aziz, you have a disease. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aziz, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Aziz. <laughs> it's a disease. Oh, please. <laughs> David in Tennessee. Hey, hold on. Okay, buddy. I got all the time in the world. Sorry. sorry, I was back in the car. That's okay. Hey, Chris, hey, Chris you're the best. Um, no. That is sweet. nice. That yeah. was really so sweet. sweet. Like, you just Thank made his day. No one said that in history. <laughs> you're not so that nice. big in this caller. Why did you even bring that up? <laughs> Why did you set me up? Dude, you're not that. that big. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a medium. Yeah. You could lose 10 to 15 pounds. See, that's like not Trump. that bad. Exactly. And then you'd be in perfect shape. Yeah. You got to get on meth. <laughs> mm -hmm. We made that appetite all together. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm not hungry. You guys eat. <laughs> I'll have more meth. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather just dry heat while you guys eat lunch. <laughs> That's so gross. Hey, Ron. Yeah. It's been driving me crazy. A couple weeks ago, you were talking about that Black Mirror show, yeah. and you said it was some. It was either either season three, episode four, or episode. I don't know, season four, episode three, that drove you crazy. It was the one they with the memories, where they were able to go back and get memories from somebody. Mm -hmm. That thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also just the thing of, I've had the dream, you've done something horrible, you do something even more horrible to cover up for yeah. it. You keep doing horrible things, and you're like, I'm never getting away with this. <laughs> I've made it so much worse. Yeah. The amount of times in my dreams I've choked a person to death, 
and then just go, what the fuck have I done? I can't get yeah. out of this. I liked that one a lot. I liked the dating game one. Not the, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that one. And I liked Metalhead. Have you watched the uh, one on Amazon? The uh, It's uh, done on dicks. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't, I haven't seen it, it yet. Me but neither. It seems like similar tone. Oh, yeah. Did I take over your Amazon payments? Or are you still paying for my Amazon? Because you gave um, it to me as a Christmas present. Yeah, it's probably been over a year now. Yeah. So I'm sure you must have okay, good. taken it over. No, it wouldn't be me, as you know. Unless it's just coming out of my account. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Yeah, go check on that. Because you know I never will. <laughs> but yeah, you gave it to me as a Christmas gift, right? Uh-huh. And I remember when, when I opened it, I go, what the fuck am I going to do with this? And I go, at least the tag will be there forever. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how we were saying like Tig is it's you know no one makes a, a thing like Mississippi is another another world when I was a little kid and it would have been in the 1960s I was sent to my people in Mississippi and it was another world I'm not saying it was a worse world it was yeah. they lived totally different in Mississippi they talked different. They had different things that they were into than I had in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And it was just crazy. But I even felt the same way when I went out to the Midwest. I felt like when I was a little kid, I was like, this is like going to France or something. <laughs> These motherfuckers are totally different than us. Yeah. And now I think the whole country is pretty much the same. Yeah. I think you get city people, suburb people, and country people. That's the biggest Difference is about us, but it doesn't matter as much what city, what suburb, what country. I feel like that. I was kind of touching on that yesterday when we were uh, talking about that with Subha and um, uh, the other comedian who came in yesterday. Mm-hmm. Ayana, Ayana, Ayana Duki. Yeah, Wait, yeah. Um, and their I, lives being so different. Yeah, like and yeah. like just how like especially the way we talk is getting to be like this one. Mm-hmm. Well, they they were very interesting to me because being the children of immigrants and that whole thing, like we are a family first, and we think as a family, we do things as a family. That is, you know, that's just a whole different way of thinking for me. And I I found it amazing that someone would be ashamed that their child has gone into any career that was legal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, if someone says, I want to do anything, I don't think there's a family, I, maybe it's just me, but I wouldn't go, well, that's beneath us. You know what I mean? We're not blue-collar people, or we're not <laughs> right. fucking shoe store people. I'm like, oh, cool, so you found something you like. But there are those immigrant kids, their parents are banking on them to do something fantastic. But I got news for you. And this is what I like to say to the immigrants. In America, we're not impressed with lawyers or fucking doctors you know what i mean like no one is ever like oh that person's a lawyer isn't that special <laughs> you know what i mean you're like oh you know a doctor oh they're around disease all the time <laughs> we're not impressed yeah with that aspect of people yeah i think maybe an entrepreneur if they're good but i know entrepreneurs have been rich and then broke yeah like it it has i think honestly what impresses us most is like you have a unique job that you love to do and you have excitement. You're a cool like, person. Yeah. We're not really that impressed with jobs, really. I don't think. Yeah. Like my uh, my friend is married to a guy who works in sanitation. He drives a garbage truck in Staten Island. And I talked about it with him for two hours. And I was just like so fascinated by his job well particularly in this city yeah it's just mind-blowing it's really really crazy but i'll just say this when i was a kid the impressive job was airline pilot somebody's an airline pilot they work for twa because that's That's, like almost an astronaut and now that doesn't mean shit Mm -mm. you know you're making not great money you're basically driving a bus in the sky but that used to be you know it's the same thing people like well he's an airline pilot but i don't think that that it's uh, like any time that I do any crowd work, I'm a coder. Uh, I got a software startup. It's the same thing. I'm like, maybe that's cool, but probably not. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's not. Those guys are just nerds. 
You made that decision for all of us? Yeah. Talk about hive thinking, Chris. <laughs> Is there something you're impressed with that people do? Uh, I always thought I was impressed by like a private detective until I realized it's just them huh? just like following people it's around. Nothing. I had a friend who did it and he said, um, I sit in my car a lot. Exactly. That's you're a stalker. Yeah. Yeah. A paid stalker. And even you and know, usually he was just serving people papers. Yeah. You know, most of what he was doing is somebody's dodging someone won't sign their divorce papers, and Nothing's he's serving them papers. Romantic about it, yeah. I think the only reason why you thought it was romantic because of movies and TV. You know? Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever heard. Oh, a detective fucking solves a crime. <laughs> I'm not even. <laughs> I'm not even that fucking impressed when someone, uh, like if somebody told me that, that they were a senator. I go, oh. <laughs> fucking Especially guys. State I mean, Senator. you guys get nothing. I'm a done. judge. <laughs> yeah, congressman. Those guys are like, well, I, you know, I'm from uh, Wyoming. Can't get back there all the time. It's too expensive. I sleep in my office on a fucking fold out couch. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you're fine. The only thing you get is to see the president every once in a while. Like, that's the impressive thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, I got together. The whole house. <laughs> fucking great. President came out. We were going crazy. <laughs> Did you meet him? Well, I mean, I was close. <laughs> His office called me and said, I had to vote this way. Or they're going to beat me up. <laughs> and then they, they, they said they spent most of their day calling people asking for money. Every congressman oh. spends most of their day calling because they need $2 million dollars to get a job that pays sixty grand a year, I just fucking call up and go like this. Uh, I'm just letting you know this is my last call. I'm cutting my throat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up Why'd to you? you? Call me what do you want me to? Well, you you see it now on the thing that they're just walking around. It looks like they're in a mall. I went there before, uh, walking through Congress, and uh, looks like shit. Really? Yeah, it looks like shit. And all those guys are just standing around talking and shit, and their offices are wide open. That's fucked. It's crazy, man. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Uh, Andrew, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ron, how you doing? Cool. Um, I just wanted to relate to what you guys were just talking Good. about. Uh, my wife is a veterinarian, and I don't know, I feel like maybe that used to mean something to people. It's It's mm -hmm. a doctor. Um, but now mostly what she hears is, oh, a veterinarian, uh, why didn't you become a doctor? And um, it's not as high paying as people assume. Yeah, because you're only going to so, pay so much to get your fucking dog fixed. It's not like humans. it's your mom. Dogs are broke. Let me tell you, when I, was, uh, when I was a fucking kid, there was a veterinarian that was near the bowling alley. Me and my friends, when we'd be heading to the bowling alley, because it was like a hangout place when we were like in fourth or fifth grade. Um we would stop past this veterinarian thing and there was a window and you could look in and we would see the dogs on there and, and the dogs would be shaken and they would piss 100% of the time when they were doing stuff. They would piss all over people and we would go fucking crazy laughing <laughs> and the veterinarian would be like, get out of here. You're a bunch of little fucking dogs. And we're like, well, you got piss all over you. And off we'd run. But we did it all the time. And even back then, but imagine your veterinarian can you fix this dog? But they can't tell you what's wrong with it. Oh, by the way, can you fix this gerbil, this snake, this ostrich? How the hell are you going to know that? I know, that is pretty impressive. They expect any animal. It's, it's a ton of schooling that takes a long time, but most people's opinion of veterinarians these days is they just want to take your money, and yeah. they're not well-liked anymore. No, no, everyone thinks that they got ripped off. Yeah. I took my dog over there and, you know, it needed an operation and they want fucking $2,300. Like, then put the dog to sleep for fucking 65 <laughs> Hey, I want you to go home and say to your wife tonight, thanks for your service from the Bennington Show. Yeah, we okay? appreciate it. Right. Appreciate, appreciate her. Because we care about all the animals. Mm -hmm. From the ant to the yard bar. <laughs> <laughs> It just seems like you're just covering A's. <laughs> oh, okay. Good point. But I don't have time to go through every fucking atom. <laughs> hey, there's something wrong with my head. Did you take a look at it? it looks like his her head is busted. <laughs> I, I took an ant into, and just go like this. I, and they're like, well, what's wrong with that ant? She's just not growing. I mean, you look at her now. She's two years old. Stunted. And almost the same size as when she came out of larvae. Uh, I have a problem with my fly. What's wrong with it? It won't. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> it's supposed to be a fly, not a fucking sit. Do anything you have, any amount of money to fix this fucking thing. I'll pay for it. <laughs> I took an elephant in. I go like this. I'm willing to pay anything because the, the nose is too long. <laughs> Um, just the nose shot. I think she feels embarrassed. <laughs> Tell you the truth, take a look at the ears, too. I'd like to take <laughs> three or four feet off of them. Okay? <laughs> I don't know why she's this fat. I don't give her anything but peanuts. <laughs> Nothing. But she's fucking huge. It's gotta be genetics. It's not me. <laughs> Unless she's eating when I'm not around. <laughs> I'm having a problem with my lion. Uh, Never tells the truth. I mean, <laughs> lion is the perfect <laughs> fucking thing for this. It's the perfect name for this fucking animal. <laughs> so I don't know why you have to put her on some kind of a drug. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Um, I think we got to take a break here, don't we, Chris? Yes. You know, uh, I want to tell you something about your girlfriend because I know that you get worried about her, right? Oh, yeah. And you're worried what she's up to. All the time. You need Ring. That way you can keep an eye on her. Uh, Ring's mission is to make every neighborhood safer. Today, over a million people use the amazing Ring video doorbell to help protect their homes. Ring knows home security begins at the front door, but it doesn't end there. So now they're extending that same level of security to the rest of your home with the Ring floodlight cam. Just like Ring's amazing doorbell, floodlight cam is a motion-activated camera and floodlight that connects right to your phone with HD video and two-way audio that lets you know the moment anyone steps on your property. Now, since she lives alone, Chris, and you're in the other part of town, you can have this set up at your place, and then you can see and speak to visitors. Even set off an alarm right from your phone. With Ring's floodlight cam, when things go bump in the night, you'll immediately know what it is. Whether you're home or away, the Ring floodlight cam lets you keep an eye on your home from anywhere. Ring floodlight offers the ultimate in home security with high visibility floodlights and a powerful HD camera that puts security in your hands. With Ring, you're always home. Save up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit when you go to ring.com slash comedy. Ring.com slash comedy. That's ring.com slash comedy. Welcome back to Bennington. Jesse David Fox is in the studio. Yeah. Yay! Jesse's the senior editor at Vulture.com. His podcast, Good One, a podcast about jokes, is available now on Apple Podcasts. And next Monday, the season finale will be with Pete Holmes on Twitter at Jesse David Fox. Uh, first of all, Jesse, thanks for bringing your accent. I don't know what you're <laughs> going to plug in and play. Yeah, I'm just going to strum on a unplugged electric guitar. Uh, now, before we get into anything else, what kind of music do you play? What's the... Uh, Indie rock music. Okay, what Wait. was what was the peak for you? You was uh, you mid mid aughts is uh-huh. like I I mean that's when I was a young person. Yeah, I would go to shows. Was, yeah. So I, I I think our band tries to sound like the bands of my youth. Yeah. Um. So like, it's not bands that sound like it's not that we don't sound like New Order. We sound like the bands that we're trying to sound like New Order. Right. Yeah. And it was, that was the last scene in America, yeah. I believe. Yes. The New York scene in the early aughts. Yeah. Was like, oh, something actually did happen. Yeah, you know. I mean, I'm obviously I'm yeah. partial to that time period of music, right? But I like it. I particularly like it because it's like, yeah, it's like rock, but it's like sexy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like they were trying to keep it nice yeah, and yeah, sexy, that's what I and that's say what about I like. My music, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like rock, but we try to keep it yeah. sexy. Yeah, I mean, it's like I, I lived I lived in Williamsburg once, and mm-hmm. it, I was the one. The couple years I was cool, I I try to re uh, reimagine that time. just over and over, which <laughs> everyone does musically. Yeah, whatever they felt, it's either high school or college that peak because yeah, I don't know your musical taste buds are are there. You know, yeah. I thought I was going to be a person that would keep up on things, and then I turned thirty, and I just sort of yeah. like, oh no, I I have enough comedy to watch to then have to know yeah. it's like. Just give me the new records of bands that I want. And I didn't think I was going to be that person. And I was like, oh, no. Like, I'm happy that, you know, Wolf Parade put out another album. Because, like, that's new music for a band I already decided. Right. I'm already comfortable (laughs) with them. That's good. But it is. It's actually 
I believe harder now with the amount of choices yeah. than it was at any time that we used to just trust radio. You know what I mean? You had the FM and AM radio. You had country radio. Everybody could go to like, okay, here's the best of that genre. Now it's just all over the place. And even between when I, there's music blogs were really kind of starting up when I was in college and just graduating. So I kind of got a sense of, it already was expanding, but he kind of knew who the best of every little type of thing right. is. But like my little brother who's about like 12 years younger than I am. He, for him to be sort of into obscure music means bands that are sort of like, have band camp pages that he sort of just sorts through right bands yeah. that don't even have like um soundcloud pages or things that anyone would write about yeah and i'm like that but to him it's this it's the same exact thing that i did it's just it's insane the amount he would have to listen to to sort through to find out what he finds right but i also think to for that thing to grow you need a physical place like we said we all know seattle what age yeah. you wanted to be there when you wanted to be in new york there was two or three different times when you'd want to be in L la or london but you don't get that anymore because things go too fast no and and i mean like there's a lot of bands i like currently in philadelphia but i don't know if they sort of think of themselves as a scene as much as Oh, it's just cheap to cheaper, live in Philadelphia. Yeah. Cheaper to live in Philadelphia, Philadelphia and our friends live yeah. there. Yeah. Same with Baltimore, like I think have like at a time certainly was like starting to have like an art scene, music yeah, yeah. scene. I don't know what they're doing down there because they're doing their own thing, but right. like I'm not sure maybe ten, fifteen years from now we'll step back and go, Oh, that was a thing that was happening there. But you know, all my friends from Baltimore have been killed. So I, uh, <laughs> but really, I just knew the guys from The Wire. That was it. <laughs> all right, you're wrapping up this season yes. of your show, and you're doing it with a guy who basically helped start the show. Yeah, helped start the I show. I thought it was a nice little full circle thing, and yeah. and also like it it felt good because he so much I know about comedy comes from his podcast. Mm -hmm. Like not be, like I watched it. His podcast had just because it was so long. When comedians talked about comedy, they talked about it longer. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, that's how they think about it. Oh, that's how they can think. And then it, and then I sort of was able to apply that, and then just take it a step further. But I was, it felt right to be like, oh, this is a person who shapes such my worldview of like what a stand up should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, what would happen if I sort of put the mirror back on him and he's uh, very good at talking about why he does the thing he does yes he uh, thinks about himself quite a bit yes <laughs> <laughs> now have you seen this season of crashing yet have you I seen think I saw the first six episodes yeah all right I, so i think the, the, i think it's a more interesting yes uh, show uh i love where the, uh, i love the bill burr yes episode the arty stuff is dangerously close yes to the truth but my favorite part of it, I believe, is a little thing with the Lucas Brothers where they give <laughs> oh, the difference between alt well, comedy and mainstream comedy. It, it's a funny thing to be like, this is a television show? But it, yeah. it, it's and it's funny because like I think for a lot of people, they it's like, yeah, it's second nature. We know what that means. But I remember even at my job, I was writing a piece and it had the word alt comedy in it a lot. And my boss, who wasn't familiar with the term, it's like why do you use that word so much? It feels so 90s. It's like, well, it came from the 90s, but it yeah. still exists. And I think, I mean, Peter said that like, HBO's like, no, that's good. People want as specific as possible. Yeah. And I mean, it for me is, as a person who's gone to more of those shows than club shows, especially in the last 10 years, I was like, oh, it's cool that people are going to be able to know there's difference and different comedians can thrive in different things. Um, and they recreated Rafifi for, you know, which yes. is really <laughs> charming. Um, but, that mix with, I just think the show, the season just in general is more interesting. Um, I said to him, I interviewed him at, the, at a premiere thing. And I was like, the first season was like a fish out of water. So he was just sort of struggling. Yeah. But n this is like down the rabbit hole. So everything is, he's doing all the things. He actually has yeah. to confront it. It's, it's, it's much more about the religion and less about just sort of like what it's like to bark, which is, you know, it's interesting, but there's, there's really nothing. There's, I mean, religion is a odd, though, to, Though so much of this country is religious, it, it is a thing that's very rarely put on television. It's very rarely talked about because people are willing to give a rebuttal yeah. very quickly or question you as if, yeah. you know, hey, let me see if you're really religious. But, um, <laughs> no, he, I mean, he is. He knows. Well, what I, I yeah, what I like about Pete is the Pete Holmes character is so annoying to me. 
<laughs> like there are things that he does, like on the TV show. Yes, All right. I didn't know if he met a stage persona. I'm going to assume or his regular in real day. life, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because he's putting it out there. But he does things for a guy who thinks that he's a nice guy and says that he's a nice guy. He does uh, plenty of things that are very self-centered, yeah, uh, very selfish. Cross all kinds of social lines. Everyone tells him, you know what I mean? Everyone will say, that's terrible what you're doing. Yeah. And it made it, uh, it, it, it makes it fascinating. Yeah. I mean, there's a scene, just, I mean, I don't think it's, I don't even know what we're spoiling, but it is a thing where, uh, there's a character who asks him not to do something. He's yeah. like, no, I'm just trying to help. I'll, and he's like, yeah. just play, don't do it. And then he does it anyway. And you're like, that is a terrible thing it's to do. It's a terrible do. thing to and do. And it's really embarrassing for her. And you're like, and I think that's, I, Pete is a sort of a nice person. When we think of nice as almost like a pejorative, or like they're nice to your face, but then yeah. sort of their intentions are still self centered. And uh, that show captures, I think that's probably a part of them that he's had to wrestle with. Well, even the thing where he's he's good to Artie Lang and he's a nice person. And he's looking out for Artie. And Artie's saying, because you get things from being around me. Yeah. And there is true, and it is a reason why it's hard for uh, an addict with any kind of talent to bottom out. Because there's always young people who will drive them. Yeah. Because they're with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they can use it. And they, most of them, they will be like, oh, boy, he's bad, but, you know, I'm here for it. You know what I mean? You're just like, yeah, that doesn't really make you a great guy. Also, art of any kind that if your performance doesn't suffer for it, it makes it a hard motivator right. to stop that. And there are jobs that you could be called out immediately and be like, you cannot perform this job yeah. Yeah. while intoxicated or whatever your thing well, is. I mean, people will say we liked junkie keith richards better we right. like junkie lou reed better right you well, know oh i think it's because with artists we uh cut them a lot of slack with sort of the things that we define jobs to be like be on time and like be courteous right. to your coworkers if they can succeed at the part of the job of like being a genius or whatever but i th you i think probably as time goes on it's still the case and I mean, we're seeing a little bit, obviously, with like Me Too stuff where it's like, no, you have to now be a professional because everyone else yeah. is doing it. And there's so many talented people that maybe, you know, like you'd have to be out of this world talent to really just justify the show starting two hours later than it. And I think yeah. that's what they address with Crashing, which is like, he's still really funny, but part of being a comedian is showing on time for the show. You have to be that you can't ruin the show for the people yeah. who paid to be part of that. <laughs> yeah. You know? And yet I saw Kinnison load it so bad one night that people were getting upset. And that kind of feels more interesting to me than the times that I saw him when he was professional. You yeah, I, I, mean? I think if you have the freedom to see Sam Kinnison twice but I think if you're like, this is the one night a month you go out and yeah. you, you get babysitters. And, you know, I think yeah. I, I was I was talking to a coworker about like the future of stand up comedy. And I was just thinking about like, it'd be interesting if we just sort of have professionals again. I think there's like a certain sort of looseness that was happening. And I think yeah. a lot of stand ups are now like working harder on their material than they had in a while. And then they see like John Mulaney's like Mr. Professional, like sell out every single seat that he could possibly be put yeah. in front of. And I think there's something to be like, I'm going to do a good job because you asked. Me too. And it's like my relationship to the audience is we're in this together. I'm providing a service. I appreciate your time. And, and, and I think I can imagine comedy going in that way with so many people, especially now, growing up, imagining they can be comedians and then treating it like their career. And so they're like, I'm going to work really hard. And then once I do it, I'm going like, to show up on time. And yet we don't see that as art. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it starts to that kind of professionalism. You're like, oh, he's a good entertainer. Like there are people that are real good writers. Let's say Jerry Seinfeld. Everyone agrees he couldn't work hard, blah, blah, blah. But if you said to people, who do you think is better, him or Chappelle? I think people would go, oh, Chappelle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And Chappelle seems like he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. And there's something <laughs> about that that we love. Well, it's, you can't imagine being Dave Chappelle where you can imagine being Jerry Seinfeld. Sure. Well, because Jerry Seinfeld is just sort of the pinnacle of what anybody can do. Mm -hmm. Anyone can sit down and sort of think about a subject. He just does it at like... He's like a Batman, right? So Batman has no superpowers, but he just sort of is the pinnacle of human capability. Yeah. Where like a Dave Chappelle is a Superman of he has things that are 
not human. Like, he's able to be on stage and people will pay attention to him even if he's not being funny, even if he's not saying anything. So few comedians just sort of have that, like him and Gerard have that ability of like, I'm just going to talk for a while. Right. And you're like, and it's fine. But Mm -hmm. the best comedians, like Chris Rock can't do that. And he's Chris Rock. Chris Rock goes on stage if he's sort of like, um, think, you know, people are like, what is that one? He he gives it up. If Jerry does that, it'd be so weird. But that's what you look for in Dave. And that is, we because we can't relate to that. Like, oh, that's something special. Where um, the Mulaney's and the Jerry Seinfeld were like, well, that's us if we were the best possible thing. Yes, which is also right. nice because you're like, oh, it's, it makes you think about humanity as this thing of blah, 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 blah. But there is something about the Superman that you always are going to be curious about because they're doing something out of this world. Yeah, but don't you think it would be depressing if Seinfeld came in here and like after the first couple of minutes that we decided... Oh, it's it's Seinfeld. That's cool. If we thought, hey, he doesn't seem to be the funniest person even in this room. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I think that's what happens. Yeah. I think he is a great professional. Now, I don't think you would feel that way with Brian Regan, who writes the same way. But Brian is also really funny. Yeah. But and I and I'm not sure about Melanie either. But those guys seem to be. Like, just really yeah. hard work. I mean, I think Jer- Jerry's like a, well, at least when he decides to care, mm. he will be f- a funny, personable person. But like, like on Comedians and Cars, he's very funny on that show. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's funny enough on that show. But yes, he, I, <laughs> fine. I think he's funny on that show. I'm, uh, <laughs> but yes, he, he is more, I think uh, Mulaney is a funny guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see like when he hang, he does podcasts or he riffs or I mean like yeah. that he could do both oh hello and be a guy who can write is a range of different types of skill set that did you like oh hello I saw it was, uh, the funniest thing I've seen everybody told me how great it was and all the everybody here had seen it and my, and then when I saw it on t- maybe I had it in my head mm-hmm. that it was going but I don't know whether it translated to TV it didn't because- I don't think it I don't think it did as well because I do think that the show was. You know, the live show was yeah. pretty spectacular. It was a really fun night. I, I thought the it. concept was really fun. You went crazy when yeah, you Yeah, I mean, yeah. of everyone who saw it, I think Chris was like the crazy, like biggest fan. <laughs> the craziest. Yeah, I love the it. The craziest. And, but then I watched Netflix special. Like, this is going to be great. Oh. I haven't watched I haven't watched Netflix special. Crazy. Yeah. Because I've, I've seen it three times live, different settings. Yeah. So I was like, well, let me wait like a year, three years, so then I forget all the jokes. Um, so I, I can't speak right, let's to let's do that next time make sure you watch it right, so we can find out but live I was like this is th- not only sort of like it's the funniest in that like it connects to me and makes me laugh but it has the most funny things like the amount of jokes they put in that thing it was like a Marx Brothers show they toured it and everywhere they could find a new joke a new joke they put right. it in and so you have John Mulaney's ability to write the hell out of something and Nick who also can write but then you have parts where like Nick improvises something about an old show and he just can do it yeah yeah um, and then you have the celebrity guest part, which is also, I mean, I went the opening night in Broadway, which was Alan Alda, which was what they based the show around this idea yeah. of these people who would be big Alan Alda fans. And it's, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, like I see comedy for a living, but there's an amount of energy of how funny people thought this thing was that really that I, excitement I, level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is rock and roll. That's really a great yeah. thing to be able to capture. But you thought you watch, you're like, what is, I don't know if I even finished it. I felt like, <laughs> oh, I, I kind of wish Martin Short would have done this, is what I was thinking to myself. And I felt like I, and it could have been the directing. I could have felt like I was too far back. Yeah. I hate when people pay too much attention to the crowd and not the. Well, they, they cut to the crowd? Yeah, maybe. Wow. I don't know. I felt like I would, I didn't feel like I was on top of it, you know? Yeah. And I do have plenty of problems with the directing of. Stand-up, stand-up specials. There's so many times. Yeah, I also don't need to see a bunch of shit on stage. I don't know what a big pair of scissors is it's doing. So <laughs> weird. The sets of stand-up specials are yeah. always so weird. Yeah. It's like a yeah, giant I, ice cream cone. The, <laughs> like this is a reference to something. Yeah, this is gonna come. Or it's always like a yeah. set of like a childhood house, ha- like a childhood house, not necessarily yeah. theirs. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're always so they're always so generically bad. But even ones now, now the Netflix gives them more money. They're still 
directed generically. There's no sort right. of visual point of view. They just now have nicer cameras and more of them. So there's like crane shots, but it's still like... And that takes me out immediately. Yeah. I don't want a swooping camera. I thought what Judah did was brilliant were just these set things. Yeah. Just at him. You never once see the audience. It's in black and white. It's almost like an album itself, yeah. like an old school album. And I thought the thing that he did... That was better than anything is the crowd didn't necessarily and weren't necessarily fancy is. You know yeah. what I mean? He did it in the city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I hate when someone comes out and the place is going nuts like, hey. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I I know that dude. I didn't see what it's like when they come out on stage. It isn't. No one's yeah. that thrilled. It, it's funny. To, <laughs> no, thank uh, you. <laughs> like talking about Pete Holmes, because between his two specials, I had talked to him after the second one, which is the HBO one. And he talked about how good the crowd was on the HBO one to a point that it was like unbelievable compared to his Comedy Central one where it was so bad he had to add laughs back in. Oh. Like he's like, I'm I don't I'm not embarrassed to admit on the record that <laughs> I put laugh track laughs in because they were wrong. They didn't <laughs> laugh when they were supposed to. That's great that he would say that. But I mean, yeah, I I, I love how Judas looked, and this is a thing I'll, I'll ask you. It was really long. It yeah. was to me wait. If that was 30, and not even like it needed to be, it was an hour and like 20 minutes. Yeah, an hour and 20. It should, if it was 38 minutes, I might have had it, like I didn't put on my best specials. You know what list. the yeah. weird thing is? I, did, I wasn't conscious of the length of it. And I don't know I'm why. normally the conscious uh, of anyone's special because yeah. I think an hour is too long. Yeah. yeah, I do. I think an hour is, I don't know why they just don't break them up into tracks and release them that way. I think the special could go away and I'd be happy. It, it's you so know. weird. They switch to, especially Netflix, where you can. There's no reason it has to be any length of time. There's no commercial yeah. breaks. Why everyone's like, oh, I'm still going to do an hour, an hour, five. That's essentially yeah. what it is. They just sort of where like the nice thing about a Comedy Central special is like it's 42 minutes long. So that 42 minutes, as long as they don't edit it poorly, like crushes really hard. Like yeah. I, I said, like the funniest Netflix specials were the half hours because you have these people who can do an hour. They're national headlining yeah. comedians. Nikki Glaser, Nate Bargatze, best-selling, but they do only a half an hour, so it's like, this is wall-to-wall funny. You don't get exhausted because you don't have joke fatigue. Because, like, I was talking to a comedian who I won't name just in case they didn't want He He was like, we're talking about this, because most comedians can't generate an hour of good material in the amount of time they're asked to do yeah. between, between specials. They can do probably 30, and they can maybe get... 15, that's pretty good. And then they just feel like they got a way to fill yeah. out the other 15. Suddenly tell an old story that then <laughs> their friends went to Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, I do know that even when I'm enjoying the hell out of a special and I'm just like, oh, man, this is a really good special. I know that because of the amount of time and just like it's just like a lot, like mm. like a fatigue that kind of yeah. comes over you. The ne- like if someone asks you the next day, oh, what were the funniest parts? You're like, oh no, I know I was laughing. <laughs> so because You're, I think yeah, it's it, hard it, it can like it can yeah. be kind of exhausting to keep up that kind of level of energy for one comic. I yeah. think it's just tiring. And a lot of people aren't quotable anymore. You know what I mean? Like, you could watch Kevin Hart. I don't know if you said to anyone, tell me a Kevin Hart joke. If they could. They're just like, he's so funny. He has, yeah. <laughs> you do this sort of, like, yeah. matters. I mean, uh, anyway, Kevin Hart is so funny, but it's all just sort of like, it's a ball of energy that you've, yeah. like, experienced for an hour. And you're like, I know funny things happened. Yeah. My always thing is that he's so naturally funny that he doesn't have to work. Like, he could, I like, in the most, like, sort of joke breaking down of it, like, he goes from the f- beginning of the joke to the end of the joke so quickly because yeah. people are just on board. They're like, okay, yeah. jump to the crazy yes. part. Yeah. You don't have to earn us. We're on your side. And you're like, oh, he could do like two hours worth of an hour's material if he just like had the audience <laughs> were more but listening. I think he's so likable that he'll be like, it's so cold. It's a two coat night. You put a coat on a coat. <laughs> and then you're like, that's funny because you're saying it, but I don't know if I could repeat it to my friends. <laughs> um, let's plug Chris because I want Jesse David Fox is in the studio. Good one. A podcast about jokes is available now on Apple Podcasts. And next Monday, the Pete Holmes season finale uh, episode will be available. And on Twitter, at Jesse David Fox. Because I do think Kevin is the most likable. And you do something uh, where you can tell pretty quickly during your show whether it's a likable person (laughs) or somebody who's just really funny, but not necessarily likable yeah i mean i i it's well i think the thing that you'll realize is uh 
some people are naturals. Yeah. Which is always where, and you'll, they'll never be the people that you, th- you think. I remember I had Will Forte on this season, and he, he has this joke, and it's, and these scenes that I think are the funniest thing in the world. And I'm like, why, you know, what made you do? And he's like, yeah, it was funny. Yeah. And it's like, well, what's different between like what your version of stupid is or like an Adam Sandler, which is stupid, but everyone thinks it's like lowbrow and bad. It's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just sort of like doing instinctual where you have like Roy Wood Jr., who is like a professor. He knows every right. single thing. He He's like, all right, so I knew I had this conversation with my my uncle and I was like, okay, so I have that. And I knew I wanted to address Colin Kaepernick, but if I bring up Colin Kaepernick, then everyone's already going to have all these associations. So I need to sort of be near the subject and have everyone think we're talking about Colin Kaepernick, but never say his name. Yeah. And then, so you do that and you like, every single thing is so precise. Um, and then you sort of get a sense of like, Oh, who, who's closest to their onstage persona? What are the different energies? Yeah. And then when you do them live, it's always, uh, different where it's like, I mean, I imagine you've, interviewed Bill Burr in different situations yes. where I only interviewed Bill Burr live and Bill Burr live his fans are there he's like I'm gonna be this yeah. guy <laughs> where I'm like oh I, it was fun and the episode's really funny and he gives me a hard time and it's chill but I was like oh I wish I had a time in the studio because he is you can be a bit more quiet and thoughtful post when he's in front of an audience right and even when he's in front of the, you'll get that thoughtful guy for a moment yeah. then he's like who cares <laughs> but uh <laughs> you'll give a glimmer but he's yeah. like oh too much of this but i was thinking of him too because in that pete holmes show this year crashing i there's a, a burr episode that's so great yeah and he's not the nicest person there's times where you're like oh i hope he doesn't beat pete up you know what i mean <laughs> the way he's looking at pete he seemed like if they would have grown up together he might have punched pete you know what i mean <laughs> for no apparent reason he might have taken pete's money but that's the thing i like like he will go to a place that the audience doesn't agree with him yeah and then figures out why you should and quite frankly, it's not even all that important <laughs> yeah. whether you agree, but it's funny. And I don't know whether he agrees. Well, that's the thing. The yeah. And, the, and I asked, I asked him in the interviews, like, if he thinks of, he used to think he's doing a character in, in an old, in I think his first album, he says something and, you know, his early albums, the audience boos like all the right. time. Like his, and I actually like those the best. You hear the point where he's, yeah. he says something disagreeable and people are like, no. And then he like, it's like, you don't realize I'm doing a character <laughs> up here or whatever. But yeah. now it's this weird blurring and his audience loves him and you don't know. I, I, he'll prob- yeah. You probably admit it. Like he has probably pretty bad, some bad fans and some good, yeah. some fans who agree with the part that's supposed to be the wrong part. Yeah. And, um, and that makes it just sort of harder for him to do the thing because the point is that, you're supposed to not like him at the beginning. Right. So if you like him at the beginning, then you're like, oh, well, then what is, who's he winning back? Um, and everybody wants to be the, I get it. Yeah. I'm not like these other idiots. <laughs> That's what Rowan Dandy Kaufman, you know what I mean? Where people wouldn't fall into the right. thing and get mad at him. They're just like, Brilliant, mm-hmm. right? Brilliant. Yeah, he's doing that thing again. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I get it. I'm oh, like, this is one of those everybody things. Gets. I'll just play along. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your favorite this season? Or did you uh, wrong to say? No, it's fine. Uh, Roy Wood Jr. justified why the podcast exists. Yeah, he's great. That a comedian can think that deeply about it, and their process relates to why they think about comedy the way that they did. Um, Pete was really good. I think uh, I interviewed Natasha Leggero this season, and I felt like no one talks to Natasha Leggero this way. Yeah. And I think what she's done with her persona was really interesting and really successful, and she's a really strong joke writer. I was like, oh, it's good that I've been able to sort of help people take her more seriously and she actually said i used to do a character until recently with you and i'm like i wasn't aware that she felt that way you know what i mean it's you never know it's really interesting and it you know it took a little bit of getting out of her because i don't know if she would have admitted otherwise where it's like essentially she created this character and then she became that person right and slowly they just sort of merged to who she is off stage is now that person but she's now not a real the thing that uh, she's she's now a different person than she was growing up. She grew up poor, yeah. in, like in Michigan somewhere, and now she's like the fanciest person you can imagine. And the thing that really I was like, oh, that's who she is. She's like, oh, I decided to kind of do this character so people wouldn't think I'm just some Silver Lake bitch. And I'm like, oh, that's it. You are. Like, yeah. you are every, when I lived in Silver Lake, the people who sort of create these characters for yourself. The difference is like, yours was this brilliant thing and for some reason you responded to um but it is interesting that now as her life and her comedy you know she always had these jokes about like 
um, marriage being bad or and now that she is married and now that she has material about her husband and now that she is pregnant she can't pretend to be that person anymore because now she has different experiences right so i'm really excited to see what her and Moshe are doing like a dual special yeah which i believe by Moshe tweeted at me because i was complaining about how long specials were i think they're gonna both have half hours and then do another sort of thing together um which would be great because it's so funny but i think it. Like Pete is another one. We talk about his persona and how it evolved. And I, um, I brought up how he was not that good the first time I saw him because I've been wanting to tell him. I've been wanting to tell him that yeah. for years because of how good he became and successful. But he wanted to be successful enough. And I remember seeing these probably nine years in. So it was like right around he did his half hour. It's like yeah, this guy's funny, but it, like other guys that he was growing, he's coming up with. I thought were really different. And Pete was like another guy. And then over the course of the next two years, oh no, like Pete's really good. And then after that, his, so between his uh, his half hour and his hour, he's like, oh, Pete's really good. And then between his hour and his second hour, Pete's like one of the best guys. Mm-hmm. And it's a matter, and I, I, as I phrase it, he, at first he was like, I'm a fun dad. You know, like, I guess that's kind of interesting. And then he's like, this is the only world where I'm not a youth pastor. And you're like, well, that's kind of interesting. And then now his comedy is, he's a youth pastor. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's no difference. He is preaching every joke he tells is now like and now go home and do unto others (laughs) yeah you know like that you know and that's a little bit like sam Sam kinison but he he really is but do you think that's him also buying into his character the way i said that she did you know yeah i think it's i think it's also like if you listen to his podcast he and the season of crashing is kind of about it where through losing his religion and then sort of finding something new, he then became more religious, and then that became the only thing he sort of... I love the thing with Penn. I yeah. love the thing with Penn that somebody who could be smart about something makes you go, oh, yeah, okay, maybe. And, well, I had a friend uh, that became an atheist yeah. because of Penn talking. <laughs> really? But, yeah, but he just went, my, my dad's gone. He doesn't exist anyway. <laughs> um but there was, uh, but I, I asked Pete about it. I go, would that have worked if it was Ricky Gervais instead of Penn? He says, absolutely not. You can see that that was a, it's a whole different thing Ricky Gervais does. Yeah. You, know, you can see that that stings a little, which I also think is great. You yeah. know what I mean? I think it's great where you're like, mm, he pushes it. Well, I, th- I think Penn is, understands why people are religious and yeah. is not just holier than thou about it. And he understands that you can be spiritual in different ways. I, I imagine he's definitely a spiritual guy. Yeah, like pe- as far as being connected to other humans. Yeah. Yes. I mean, like in minimum, I think pursuing magic and obviously mar- magic is fake, but like the interest in magic in general implies some amount of wonderment. Where Ricky Gervais is like, "How dare you have hope or wonderment? <laughs> <laughs> what's so wrong with that? You die. That's what's so wrong. That's the way nature is." Um, all right, we got to wrap this up. Do a, a quick plug there, Chris. <laughs> Jesse David Fox has been in the studio. He's got to go rock. <laughs> Good one. A podcast about jokes is available now on Apple Podcasts. Next Monday, the season finale will be available. It's season, season finale with Pete Holmes and on Twitter, at Jesse David Fox. And we did all this without bringing up Aziz. <laughs> it's, 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 a picture of Aziz is right above your head. Is I was that like, right? Yeah, What's the like, latest? So just... Aziz and modern romance. It's well. probably going to be <laughs> not good. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should remake Louis' show. That would be the smart thing. To do. All right, that's it for us, guys. Thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, always great to see you, and let's do it again soon. I love it. And uh, we'll see you all again in 1974. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening!